I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Welcome to the Rated G for Gamers podcast, episode 158. Just a reminder before we start that you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Rated G for Gamers. Please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. We appreciate all the love. Also, we are now on the Gaming Podcast Alliance. Uh, Please go to GamingPodcastAlliance.com and check out all of the great podcasts featured there. I'm your host, Dave Rotino, and this is my co-host, Dan. He thought he survived the Pax Plague, but no, he has the Pax Plague. Robinson. What's going on, man? Yeah, it is uh, It is inevitable, Dan. We have we have all been there. I have been there on multiple occasions. Um, you know, it's fair to say that you're a little bit under the weather. Is that is that okay to say? Uh, I feel I feel like a million bucks. You do well. Well, you know, if you got if you got if you got hit with a bus, yeah. Uh, I feel horrible. Uh-huh. It hit uh-huh. me like a ton of bricks. I can tell you. I uh, I feel you, man. I feel you. I mean, uh, uh, obviously, you know, we are we are back from PAX. This is our so second episode back from PAX, right? Uh, we thought we thought we survived the plague. I know you got a little bit sick on Friday, and I was like. Wow, it's coming on. It's coming on, man. Like, like power through, make it happen. And you did. You powered through Friday. You powered through Saturday. You powered through Sunday. Came back. And then Tuesday, you're like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. So, I know. After we recorded uh, was it one, episode 157, yep. I was like, yeah, I'm not feeling so hot. And mm-hmm. it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I, I definitely caught the Pax Pox, Pax Plague, mm-hmm. the... Mm-hmm. You call the the Pax Apocalypse. I, I caught it. The Apocalypse. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's. I mean, look. There's like almost a hundred thousand people that come through those doors in the matter of four days, right? Uh, between all of the uh, between all of the celebrities, between all of the panels, all of the con goers, the exhibitors, uh, the enforcers, the security. I mean, and you know, not to mention just everybody around the town, right? Like it's you know it's inevitable. I don't know why everybody's not sick. Uh, uh, pro tip, pro tip: mm-hmm. always keep hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer in your bag. Yep. And and don't keep generic hand mm-hmm. sanitizer like I did because that obviously doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I, I've actually noticed over time since like you know I've been I've 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 worked a bunch of conventions and now going to PAX since like 2010 or 2009 or whatever. I I've slowly seen the progression of the, you know, kind of clean uh, disinfectant wipes and the hand sanitizers out at like every table. Right. Everyone's trying to stay clean and medicated and and, you know, sanitized and all that, um, you know, but like, like, like more so than ever. Like there was not a single person who didn't have hand sanitizer like sitting around somewhere. And we were always on top of it. Like, boom, 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 boom. But. Well, I want to be well. You know what? Kudos to all of like the developers or any developers mm-hmm. who at their stations would wipe down the controller right yep. before. Oh we yeah, 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 yeah. Headset, headset, uh, and controller. You know, big up, big up yeah. for them. You know, because they didn't, they didn't have to do that, but they did go. They went, they, they, they went a little above and beyond. So I, when I saw that, I was like, yes, that's mm-hmm. impressive because I, anytime we, I get a controller and I don't see anybody wipe it off, I mm-hmm. immediately. Hit my hands with hand sanitizer. Yep. Yep. So yep. Pro tip, don't don't use a generic kind. You must mm-hmm. get the name brand because the generic kind does not work. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a little it's a little uh broken, I guess, maybe the word, uh, you know. Uh but so I I, I, I wanna know because cause personally, uh personally I will say this. 
this was one of my favorite PAXs and I think the best PAX that I've ever been to, right? We were wow. the most efficient. We uh, we saw I, I would I would say I think I think both of us saw at least 90 to 95 percent of the things that we said, hey, this game or this thing looks great or this panel looks great. Let's go ahead and do that. You know, so I think we accomplished a lot of that. Right. We did. A, we good. did a lot. We saw a lot of games. Mm-hmm. We, we got you know, we got around uh, more efficiently this year than we ever have in any in the pr- previous three years. Right. Yeah. This, this is our fourth packs. I want to say uh, right. it's our fourth packs together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, together. I think because uh, uh, I mean, we obviously we started the podcast in 2015, right? Uh, that was Late after that was after PAX 2015, which uh, that was one of the ones I didn't go to. Um, but I know we started yeah. going in 2016. So from 2016 to 2019, uh, we've been uh, we've been consistently going to PAX East, and you know it's always been a good time. Uh, this time I think more than ever, like, you know, you had a bunch of friends come up and, uh, I, you know, I met up or we met up, we met up with, uh, we met up with Steven who was, uh, you know, uh, he's been on the show before. He's a former coworker of mine and, uh, he was working the, uh, the Northbound games, uh, North. I think it was. North. It's a card game, right? It was. A, it was a card. Well, it's game. a card game. Card game company, I think, is called Northbound Games, right? And uh, he worked their booth last year. He's working their booth again this year. Uh, we didn't get a chance to play, but it looked like a really cool, um, looked like a really cool card game and whatnot. And uh, you know, Stephen was kind of real into it. Uh, we got to see him for a little bit, which was uh, which was which was awesome. And uh, and uh, a friend of his, uh, Megan, uh, I was on. I was on their podcast, uh, uh, I guess, ages ago, like uh, 2016, maybe or whatnot. And, uh, you know, so I've I, you know, I met her through the podcast um, and she was super cool. Uh, she she proposed. She proposed to her now fiance. Right. It, it um, was beautiful. They had they had dancers and they, mm-hmm. had, they had like a whole like uh, not an orchestra, but they had like a, they had, like, a mini orchestra, I think. You know, mini orchestra. Had, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and now, they did. That, was and that, they did. Was that was that? What's up? Was that Final Fantasy music. I heard? That was a oh wow, Dan! I have taught you well. Yes, they did. Uh, they did. They did the. They did the Fei Wong classic from uh, Final Fantasy VIII. Eyes on me, right? Uh, it's the famous, uh, famous song with with uh, Squall and uh, Renoa. They were dancing. That's the famous clip of that. So it was very, very touching. Um, you know, they, 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 they did it in one of the many open spaces. Um, it was kind of just like boom. All right, ready? Here we go. She set this whole thing up. It was, it was a beautiful, big, big old. It was awesome because all, because all the dancers and the violinists were hiding behind a concession stand all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. right. So we were just standing and we were like, I was like, we're the dancers and everything. And you're like, no, no, I think they're behind a concession stand because they had like mm-hmm. tables standing up to block yep. them. And I was yep. like, oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, I got to say, just from a hanging out PAX experience, mm-hmm. this was the best PAX. Right. By fall, I've been to. Right. Uh, just because I got to hang out with more friends. We got to do more things, see more things, um, you know. I think this was one of the first times. I, yeah, I think this was the first time. All, all the four years we went, we stayed from like open to close. Mm-hmm. All four mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. we were there. We were there late. You know, we were there late. You know, we were definitely putting in the work. Uh, we were seeing as much as we could. You know, we went to we went to a couple of panels, which was awesome. Um, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, I, I mean, me, like I got a you, I got a you, I got a, I got a YouTube gaming cape. I'm a you got, yeah, you got a YouTube gaming cape. <laughs> I, uh, me, uh, you know, I, I wasn't so keen on that, Dan. I'm sorry. I don't Not know everybody what, wanted the cape. I don't Wait, know what I'm going to do me. with a uh, cheap little $2 YouTube cape. Hey, you, can, you can be super, you could be the YouTube Superman. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I have to say that panel that we saw on uh, YouTube, because it was, it was like, uh, you know, YouTube monetiz- monetization, how to like grow your YouTube channel and whatever else. And. I thought, oh, hey, you know, this would be kind of interesting. Like we can, we can get some, uh, we can get some, some interesting talk from people who are in, who are kind of in that universe, right? Who are YouTube streamers as their day job and whatnot. And honestly, the whole entire thing was just like, a, hey, look at this really great YouTube feature. You guys should use it, you know, because they had someone from YouTube there as the moderator. And they had some streamers who we didn't really know, but, you know, they were well-established, of course. And 
I don't know. I don't know. I would have to say the cape was the best thing of that. Uh, best thing of that panel, and I left the cape. Well, no, I got it. You know, I, I thought it was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. They didn't, you know, they didn't give vivid detail on how to start a channel. I would say it was more so of how to maintain a channel. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was how to maintain a channel and how to use all these features and whatnot, and it was just kind of like, uh, okay, yeah. It wasn't wasn't that exciting? It wasn't that exciting? But uh, we got to see the what's good games, right? We got to see the what, what's good games panel. That was cool. Uh, it was it was their podcast recording actually, which was uh, <laughs> kind of nice. So you know, we got to uh, we got to see we got to see the three of them: uh, Andrea, Brittany, and Kristen, I think. Um, I think so it's that was that was yeah. kind of super cool, yeah. And uh, the that the blind gamer, the blind gamer, he's like, he's not totally blind, but I think he's like uh, partially, partially blind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, he legally he's blind, right? Him right. driving a car is probably not a good thing, but he has like a YouTube channel. <laughs> he has a YouTube mm-hmm. channel where like he he still he can see semi, I would assume, and he he tries to play games and it's tough. Mm-hmm. And I guess he. It's some comedic back. You know, I, th- I don't know if he has a comedic background, but it's like just watching him play games is funny. That's sort mm-hmm. of like the bottom of the channel is, mm-hmm. right? I mean, he's been on kind of funny. He's good. He's uh, he's on the What's Good Games podcast as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've checked him out. Uh, yeah, you know, he's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I like. I, I enjoy mm-hmm. his content. Yeah. Yeah. So. I um, I ended up going to see. Uh, I slipped out of one of the podcasts. I think it may have been the YouTube podcast. Uh, and I slipped into uh, slipped into one hosted by uh, Jeremy Parrish, who does uh, NES Works, which is a great. I mean, it's just Jeremy Parrish is his show on YouTube, but uh, NES Works is this thing that he's doing. And he's going through like every Nintendo game chronologically, and just kind of spending an episode talking about a game or a set of games if you know all the games are kind of intertwined, and you know we'll just kind of go into detail about the impact of that game. Uh, super interesting, and he did a whole panel of of bad uh, Hollywood tie-in games, right? So I think he did like uh, maybe they had like twelve or thirteen games. They had a small panel. Uh, there's some games I never even heard of that that they uh, like. Like, did you know they made a Mash video game? Yes, that's an NES. You did? Oh, okay, okay. I did not know I, they made a Mash video game. It is I essentially a Choplifter. I think I even think I own it. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. There you go. I did not know they had a match video game. They they were uh, they were uh, talking about Porky's and uh, just just a bunch of other like weird stuff. Like it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like it was like, really cool. It was a much better panel. Um, I caught that for a little bit. That was actually right before uh, we had to go meet up with uh, Steven to see uh, to see the uh, proposal and whatnot, uh, which was which was definitely, you know, a highlight of the weekend, uh, I think. Well, well, you know, what? it wasn't there were a bunch of people who uh, proposed. Right, mm-hmm. like I think there was. Oh, it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we saw the one at the. Uh, we saw the one on the Facebook stage, right? Was it the Facebook stage? I, I, I think so. It was. I, th- I guess one. It was the arena, like the PAX arena. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe that was. Because yeah, they had the big Titan Tron, they had the big mm-hmm. Titan Tron up top, and he just mm-hmm. asked her to marry her before a match. Mm-hmm. And of course, like she, she's like on stage on a Titan Tron. She's like, yes. So I think that yeah, was. I think we saw it all together. I think I've seen like three proposals. Yeah. I think someone proposed in the middle of the floor too. Yeah, right, right, right. It's crazy. And and when we were looking, I had no idea where Steve's where Steve told us to go. Right, mm-hmm. so I'm maxing all the enforcers and I'm being pointed in like twenty different directions. Mm-hmm. When I told one of the enforcers, I was like, you know, I'm going for a surprise engagement, right? Uh, or a surprise uh, proposal. He's like, oh, cool. You know, those guys over there to your left. It's he's here for his bachelor party. Ah. <laughs> so, Someone had a Pax bachelor party. I thought that was awesome. Not a bad, yeah, yeah. not a bad, uh, not a bad, not a bad way to go. Let me tell you. You know, I, I, I would be, I'd be, I'd be very happy with a Pax bachelor party. Um, yeah. But, but if you want to talk about panels, what about the panel of all panels at Pax East? Okay, that was the Gearbox panel. Right? Oh, Everyone oh, was waiting mean, for this. You mean the one that I missed, Dan? You mean you mean the one that had the queue line? That went all the way around the Boston Convention Center. <laughs> do you mean? Do you mean the queue line to end all queue lines? The yes. biggest queue line ever, ever in my entire life was was this Borderlands Three Gearbox panel, right? They hyped it up. 
they hyped it up to no end and everybody everybody even pressed i saw people with media mm-hmm. badges online they had to yeah. wait online of course of course and so so i mean we we made it to the back and then i mm-hmm. i turn around for a minute and i lost you <laughs> I well, I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was trying, trying to, trying to uh, coordinate with Anthony, right, a uh, friend of the show. Um, you know, I'm like, I'm like, Anthony, come on, come on, come on, we're going on, we're going on the uh, the Gearbox panel. They're going to announce Borderlands Three because we all knew, we all knew Borderlands Three was being announced, right? Uh, like they had or card game. Well, card I mean, game. I mean, there was that too. I mean, like, like we we covered it uh, two episodes ago. I think 155 or 156, maybe. Um, we ended up talking about how uh, Gearbox put out this uh, teaser picture, right? And it was um, it was uh, a road sign in the middle of a desert, and you know it said uh, what like March twenty seventh, uh, and then it was like M A written in graffiti, and it was like oh, like obviously this is Borderlands related. Exit it's Gearbox three. that's putting right. this out. Exit right, right, right. Exit three. You know everything. Everything pointed to Borderlands three, and then like a day, I think a day before the convention. They put out this wicked teaser, right? This wicked teaser video. And it was like this really nice animation, right? And I'm like, well, this basically settles it, right? And it was like a, at the top, there was like a light going. It was like Morse code, right? I forgot I forgot what, what the Morse code, uh, what they were saying, but there was like Morse code on there. They yeah. even, I know you didn't make, I know you didn't make the panel, but mm-hmm. he even mentioned it in the panel <laughs> he even mentioned in the panel he, uh, all the teases before they announced it officially announced it he said i know you saw everything on twitter and then he said the morse code and everything mm-hmm. and then you know but just to take it back go back a little bit so i lost you and i didn't know where you were you didn't answer your phone and then finally you told me you're back in line you got anthony but you're like further back and i, I was like well i'm, I'm kind of stuck if i <laughs> Uh, they, you know, I, I wish I could have had you sort of come back and skip the line, mm-hmm. but enforcers were, were really strict about people uh, skipping the line. Yeah, no, so, I, well, well, I get it, I get it, I get it. You know, I went to go get somebody else, and uh, you know, the ship sailed on without me. So I ain't, I ain't bitter. But I ain't bitter I, by any means. I literally just made the cut. Right, like the group that I was in. I mean, I want to say like they took about twenty of us up mm-hmm. the escalator and gave us. Uh, borderlands mask yep they were like that's it no one else can come in (laughs) and i was like oh my god i'm i i made the panel and it had already started it was like 15 minutes in when i got in when Mm -hmm. i got there and because i i I was by myself i got to sit all the way in the front but on the end so it was like watching a movie looking all the way up yeah (laughs) you know you know all about that you know all about that sitting in the sitting in the front row watching the avengers you damn right. You know why? Because I don't, I don't pre-order tickets. Nah. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So so I mean, you had said there was a bunch of hiccups. Uh, they had well, to restart the video like ten times, right? Well, first, before we even got to the video, there was mm-hmm. you know I guess Randy Pritchard, he's like the CEO. He's a magician also, yep. and yeah, he yeah. did like a magic trick. He was doing a magic trick, so he took he pulled two people from the audience. And he was doing a magic trick. I think it was like their birthdays. And he he, he was doing magic tricks and stuff to mm-hmm. show off. The, it's uh, a really good board. magic trick. I mean, I saw it after the fact. It was really well, good. Well, no, the magic trick itself was good. The, the 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 problem was it took too long. And one of the reasons why it took too long is because he told her to pick a number between 1 and 50. So and they had to count, said, yeah. She said 46. Mm-hmm. And, and he was like, you sure you want to stick with 46? And she's like, yeah, that's my favorite number or whatever. So we had to count 46. We had to count it twice. Mm-hmm. So that took forever. Randy, Randy, if I can give you some, you know, criticism, give you some advice. Next time, tell someone to pick a number between 1 and 10. That's why right. magicians say 1 and 10. Right. <laughs> okay, not 1 and 100. Because mm-hmm. if somebody picks 99, you're going to have to count 99. Yeah. And the magic trick was all to promote the Borderlands card game. Right. Which... Tiny, Tiny Tina's something tea party or something, I think. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. That was that's that's actually the name. Yeah, it's tiny, tiny Tina's something tea party. Uh, they had a they had a small little booth in that, the gaming area, not in the board game area, in the actual like gaming area. 
uh, to that, promote the game. Uh, so they had that line was hella game. long though, but that line was hella long. That line yeah, because I mean it's Borderlands, and everybody loves Borderlands, and everybody loves Tiny Tina. She was one of the best things about Borderlands too, right? Everyone was like crazy about that. And she had her own little expansion and this and that, and that was like one of the best things apparently. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not surprising. It's not surprising that it made a big splash. So, so we did, we did the card game and then he sort of, you know, made fun of it and it's like, all right guys, that's it. Right. That's all. We got Borderlands card game. Yep. And then, and he was like, all right, all right, all right. Serious, seriously, seriously. And they announced like the 4k remaster, the 4k, uh, re-release of Borderlands one, which Mm -hmm. they passed out codes there wasn't enough to go around to everyone, especially us, pe- you know, people like me who were sitting on the end of the row. Uh-huh. Hey, you were down in front, though. You know, we. I was. Close. I was. I was. Mm-hmm. I was. I was super close. But mm-hmm. that that was super choppy. That video package mm-hmm. was super choppy, and it was mm-hmm. like, okay, let's announce the big thing that everyone's here for. And he, and he puts out, board, you know, Borderlands three, and that was super choppy. Yeah. Yeah. See. See. Everybody, everybody has everybody has trouble. Uh, I heard that they tried to blame the the PAX equipment uh, for all this. He did. Like, we should have just brought our own equipment. He's like, I love PAX, I but that. we should have brought our own equipment. Yeah. And then because so. they were playing it on three screens and a middle screen, couldn't really uh, couldn't project the 4K. They couldn't really handle 4K, just the two screens on the side. So mm-hmm. uh, after two attempts, they attempted a third time because he said, you know, we've been working on this game for five years. We're really passionate about it. We want it to be shown right. Finally, they did. They showed it on, all the, on the other two screens, and it went pretty smooth, and everyone was super happy. You know, you get a billion guns. <laughs> right? Yep. They, they made it the point. And guns have feet. And the guns have feet, and they can run and shoot you. <laughs> so weird. So weird. And, so, yeah. And you, yeah, I mean, and, you, and you have, like, four-player co-op. Right. Right, right, right. And that's, that's, um, that's coming out this year, right? And that was the weird part, because... They didn't announce a release date. They said mm-hmm. a release date to be announced in a, f- a few days later. Right. Like, like they have an announcement a few days later, which, you know, we assume it will be the release date. Right. Uh, I think it's tomorrow as of this recording. But yeah, sure. that's that's super weird. Why don't they just announce everything at PAX? Why do we have to wait, like, a, a few days later? That, that doesn't make yeah, sense. exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know what? Listen, Borderlands, I was, I'm not a big Borderlands 2 fan. I, 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 I look, really look, 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 look. I haven't I really played any of the games. So I haven't played any of the games. So, you know. But but I, I, I understand that people love the series and fans have been clamoring for this for ages, right? So it makes sense for Gearbox to put this out. Uh, good on Gearbox for, you know, making a big thing about it. You know, I'm glad everybody, you know, lined up for this thing. You know, it's obviously huge. So... You know, after the after the debacle that was uh, Colonial Marines, right? And uh, there was something else too that was really bad for them. It's good to see that they're going to get a win in their court, right? Borderlands Borderlands Three is going to be fantastic, right? And it's it's going to break sales numbers. That's a guarantee, you know. So. What didn't happen? I did. I sort of semi predicted maybe we'll get like a handsome Jack collection ported to the Switch. No yeah. Switch talk. There was I know, no right? talk, no talk of the yeah. Switch. That was yeah. a little weird. I got to be honest. Well, you know, it's not in there. It's not in their cards right now. You see what I did there? I see what you did. What did. Maybe see it could have been card 46. Uh-huh. And I we know. just didn't make it up to 46. Yeah, I, I know. You see what I did? You see what I did? I mean, I did you basically just, yeah, yeah I, d- I did. I did. You basically just took what I did. And, uh... Uh, just blame it on a sickness. Just blame it on the plague. <laughs> it's the PAX plague. It's not my anyway. fault. It's not my anyway. fault. Uh, anyway. But Borderlands Three wasn't the only announcement we got mm-hmm. at uh, mm-hmm. at uh, PAX. I almost called it E3. It's like the mini E3 for us, at least. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of being able to play all the games and all that, like a hundred percent, you know. Well, at least on it, it's the biggest gaming convention on the East Coast, right? So uh, that's East right, one hundred percent. Because because everything is on the West Coast or overseas. Let's that's be right. Honest. That's right. Gamescom, uh, TGS, Paris Games Week. Uh, E3, the PlayStation Experience, uh, GDC, uh, all of those things, you know, are... are PAX Prime. <laughs> PAX Prime, there you go. PAX Prime, you know. Sure, sure, sure. So, only, you know, it's, that, it's, it's, it's good that the East Coast gets something 
something and and something really good too. Like PAX is like I think my favorite convention out of all of them because you, you're you can, not just saying that you can play that's, games. You, that's accessible. <laughs> exactly, you can you can go and play like anything. Nothing is locked behind doors, right? Even if you have a press badge, that doesn't necessarily mean hey, you're going to get to the front of the line. You're going to get exclusive access, right? Everything is there and available. You can go and play like whatever you want. You know, you just gotta you know queue up on the line and you're good to go. Um. All right. So Borderlands Three was the big announcement. We did get another announcement. Uh, yep. They did have Samurai Showdown mm-hmm. uh, at uh, playable. At PAX, I did not get a chance. That's one of the we didn't, we didn't, games. We, you know, we both didn't get a chance to play that. To play, um, it's one of the things we were, I, we I think we were a little bit bummed about, but not, not completely upset, you know. But they did announce a Samurai Showdown Neo Geo collection. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is all the ones that came out on the Neo Geo, I guess, MVS or AES, I forget which one the arcade is. Uh, so we get we get one through five and five special, right? Those are like yeah, those are the big ones. So we get we get like six titles in there, which is which is awesome. Uh, with with the uh, with you know w- with the awesome high res uh, graphics and assets, right? With the with the uh, the scaling and the blood and all that, with the you know the weapons and the super moves. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's great. It's nice. It's going to be in this. Uh, Nice that it's going to be in this collection. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be like uh, across the board on all three major consoles. Is that right? Or uh, you know what? I, I know it's going to be an Xbox One. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely going to be an Xbox One. I think it is coming to all major consoles. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I mean, if it's on the up. Xbox One, I would assume PS4 as well. If it's on the Xbox One, it's definitely on PS4. I don't know if it's coming to the Switch. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could but definitely if... run on the Switch. You know, power is not the issue in that case, but. It's just a matter of like, do they want to spend the time to port it to that architecture? Uh, I would hope so because I actually, if... I, I well, you know, I would hope so too. I actually missed this announcement until mm-hmm. we left PAX. I didn't even mm-hmm. know about it. Same, yeah, same, same. It kind of just like because there was there was so many things to do at PAX and so much kind of going on that it's like hard to keep up with everything else. But you know, so I mean, you know, once 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 you get back to <laughs> once you get back to Earth, basically, right? Because PAX is like its own planet. It's just crazy. You know, you kind of catch up on everything that you missed. You know, all the phone calls and the texts and all the all the, well, all the news all, and the YouTube shows and everything. And you just kind of like, all right. Well, first of all, you barely get any re- any re- any reception. Like, in well, there's the that too. Floor. Yeah, because there's like <laughs> there's, there's, there's like twenty thousand so people, people crammed into one place, right? All well, on the same we, Wi-Fi network. B- before we continue, how do you like? This is the second year Pax is doing the four days. How do you like the four days? Oh, it's I I I would almost say do five days. You know? Okay. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Let's not get ridiculous. <laughs> what? what? I, I come on now. Come on now. If we had an extra fifth day, we we would have seen all the things we wanted to see. I like right. I, I, I like the four days. Thursday, now that they're doing Thursdays, I got to say, is the best day because there's, there's not that many people, right? No, so we no, go, no. I mean, you could definitely kind of move around a little bit. The, the line for, outside to get in isn't that long. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's it's long, but it's not as long. It's not Black Friday long, right? Right. Uh, at Fridays when it gets long, because it's like every it's a lot of people's first day. Like yeah, Mike, right. a friend of the show. Uh, right. Who is a real person? That you know, he's a real person, Dave. I mean, uh, I've met Mike at the last two Paxes. <laughs> yeah. Just making sure. I'm just making sure you know he's a real person. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. A, I. I. Yes. Yes. We. We have had. We have had. We have had lengthy talks. We have lengthy so, video game talks. Uh, the two so, of us. Yeah. So Mike. So Mike came on Friday, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of people's first day is Friday because mm-hmm. it's easier to take off Friday and you have the rest of the weekend. So. You know, we took off Wednesday and Thursday so we could fly out there, check in, and be ready for Thursday. Mm-hmm. So I, I like Thursday as the day that we can play a lot, right? We can get a lot in. And I think we mm-hmm. got a lot in on that first day, even though we I, did survey the land on Thursday. I think it was I think it was kind of more of like, all right, let's 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 kind of see what's out there. You know, we walked the show floor a bunch of times. You know, we caught a couple panels, I think, that first day. Uh, the Borderlands thing was that first day, right? We tried to get into that, so it was like, oh, you know, let's go ahead and try and do all these things. And then, you know, Friday we had a we had a good Friday we had a good head on our shoulders. We're like, all right, well, here's here's all the things we want to hit. Let's start let's start uh, hitting them, right? You know, and it was like, well, I want to see this, 
He was like, all right, I want to see that too. Let's let's do that, right? And then, you know, the things we wanted to do on our own, we just kind of split up and kind of break off. And um, and Saturday, and Saturday really well. was just and Saturday was just jam packed. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday is definitely the busiest day. Friday, Saturday were sold out, um, which you know makes sense. You know, the middle of the show and whatnot. Friday is part of the uh, kind of rolls into the weekend. Saturday is completely the weekend, right? So most people have off, or they're it's a little easier to take off, I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, uh, I, I, I do have to say, I do have to say one of the standout, uh, booths that was there, one of the standout companies, and it's a fairly new company called the arcade crew, right? Uh, they are doing a, an amazing job, uh, in terms of publishing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, they had, they had, they had games like Kunai, they had games like Streets of Rage 4, and they had games like Windjammers too, right? Um, among well, others, you, there was there was there was definitely a bunch more. Well, you, you had a chance. Well, you had a chance to wait on that long. <laughs> you had a chance to wait well, on that long. Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I had a chance to play Windjammers or Streets of Rage Four, uh, and I opted to play Windjammers out of the two, right? Because you wait online, you 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 go inside the center cubicle, which for which they had. Streets of Rage 4 or Windjammers 2 behind locked doors. Uh, I opted for Windjammers 2 because, uh, you know, I, I, I saw I saw the Streets of Rage, right? It was a one one side was Windjammers, one side was Streets of Rage. I know Streets of Rage. I've seen the previews and all that. It looks amazing, right? Windjammers, I was like, I don't know. Like, it's a really obscure game on the Neo Geo back from 94. You know, they decided to make a sequel. They decided to also re-release Windjammers for PS4 and Switch coming out very soon. Uh, and now we have Windjammers 4 coming out for uh, Switch again, and I believe PS4, right? And the game looks fantastic, right? It's all super high-res visuals, right? There's more characters, more stages. Uh, there's new power moves. Uh, the game was tight, the game was tight. And they like kind of said, like, hey, you can go ahead and play like a couple of games because I think somebody bowed out of their play session or whatever. So like me and this other guy got like four games. We just kept going. I'm like, nobody's kicking us out. We should just keep going. It's like, all right, we'll just keep going. And we just kept going. And we we're like, this game is great. We didn't want to leave. <laughs> we didn't want to leave. So super tight. Um, from what I saw of Streets of Ridge 4, it looked great. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah. It, it definitely, definitely a uh, one to look forward to. I think Windjammers is this year. Streets of Rage 4 does not have a release year yet. I gotta uh, imagine it's coming out like maybe E3 the announced for this year. You know I, I, mean? I don't, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I, I know they're not, I know they're not ready. Uh, I know they're not ready to put a release window on it just yet. Right. I would hope it's this year, but it, you know, it may be Christmas 2, uh, 2020, you know, it may come out like February, March or whatnot. Uh, so basically I think it's going to be done. It's ready when it's ready. I think, I think it was, a, I think it was announced for 2019. They just didn't, they don't have an official release date. I think they just said 2019. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So maybe so it'll, maybe it'll come out, out during Christmas time and whatnot. It looks super polished, but I didn't get like actual hands on time with it. So, you know, I can't say, can't say how good the controls were. But mm -hmm. I mean, it certainly looked good. It looked it looked like really slick. So uh, a game. I mean, I saw the line, and it was super long, and there was so many other things that were surrounding it that were. You just more didn't want to wait on the line. You didn't. You just, I just didn't want to wait on the line, right? I didn't want at that point in time. I didn't want to wait on the line. Mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, even at the end on Sunday, the line was super long, and I was like, "All right, no, I know. We can do, we know. Can do other. We can play other games, right? Right." Um, uh, so I didn't get again. We didn't get a chance to play everything, especially a lot of the big games. I didn't get a mm -hmm. chance to play Days Gone. Days Gone yep. was there with yep. the most unique booth. I gotta say this year because they had yeah, I real, mean, they, they, they had got, zombies. They, they, got, had they real got, zombies. got real live zombies. They got real live zombies, Dan. I couldn't believe it. They got real live zombies. I was like, yeah, they put I'm not it going, a Craigslist I'm, post. I'm not going near there. I'm not going near there. Yeah. One of them almost bought my finger. One of them almost bit my finger, Dan. You would have had to have done this show solo. I could have been a zombie. He was real frightening. Sometimes I think you are a zombie, Dave. I oh. think you are a zombie. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. I'm you not the one who has the you... Pax Plague right now. All right. 
<laughs> it's the sickness. It's, it, you know what? I cannot. I can't be blamed for anything I may say during this during this show. Whoa, hey, it's whoa, the pox whoa. plague. It's the pox plague. Dan may Dan may be in a fugue state and say say some blasphemous things, right? You know, he he but, may say he may say the Xbox, the original Xbox, is trash, and I'm not going to stop him. I'm not going to stop him. But that, but that would be you know, that would be uncharacteristic of Dan. I, I don't know if I'm that sick. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, think I'm that sick. You know. You know oh, what? You know boy. what? You know what? Did you know what? If I said Super Mario Brothers three was the best game of uh, best Mario game of all time, then I think you need to call that would it be true. That would be you need true. to call it Doctor because because that, would be, that would be blasphemous because we all know true. Super Mario World is the best game of all time. Uh-uh. But that's neither there, neither here or there. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to play Days Gone. Uh, we didn't get a chance to play Bloodstained. I didn't even know Bloodstained was there because it was like sort of when you first come in, it was it was tucked in in, in the up in the sort of the corner towards the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was in like the AAA all the way in the area corner. too, which is which is which was uh, kind of interesting. You know, typically how they how they kind of run it is the AAA games are towards the front, right? Those are all the big booths and the whatnot, you know, because they. You know, they're obviously they're paying for that well, big front, space. Front and center when you go down escalator in the middle, right? Is that front and center in the on the sides? Because the well, sides, sure. I mean, I mean, you get to like the side the areas, corner. and you know, yeah. especially the sides going all the way back. You get kind of the smaller booth, and it goes into the indie stuff, and then it goes into some merchants, and then it goes into the like the board game stuff on the back side. So you know, half of it's like table and board game and card game stuff, and then the other half. The other half is Indian AAA, right? And then vendors yeah. are sprinkled in all and, over the place. And there were big, uh, big booths for VR. They were even bigger. Like the Facebook had like a huge VR booth, right? Sure. Yeah, there, Oculus, was, there was like a, there was like a had of big a huge, Oculus stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And even in the back, they had Oculus in they the did. back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They had we, PSVR games available. Mm-hmm. We, we tried to get an appointment to see some of them, but they were all booked, all full. And I know you really want to play Golem, and we got never got a chance to play Golem. Yeah, Golem, Golem, Golem was announced like ages ago, right? And uh, it kind of just got dropped by the wayside. Sony was like, "Check this great game out. You can play as these giant hulking beasts that are, you know, controlled by this girl who's sick in a bed." And it's like, what? <laughs> This looks amazing, and then we didn't hear anything from it for like a year, year and a half. And then they're like, "Hey, Golem's gonna be at a Penny Arcade." I'm like, "Hell yeah!" But the way Sony does their bookings is you need to download the PlayStation Experience app, I think it's called, and you need to go on at at two set times during a day at nine and at one o'clock. Like as soon as it hits nine o'clock, you have to go on and click and press the button and reserve. And you can do it again at one o'clock, right? You can reserve again, and they sell out within seconds, right? They fill up within seconds. So yeah, like, I it's got like to limited play, run. It's like yeah, limited it's, run game. It's a hundred percent like a limited run. I got to play one VR game, and I'm not even going to talk about it. It wasn't even worth it, and that's that. <laughs> Oh come on! I don't even remember what was that that Falcon game or no, I, I totally no, because that would have been cool. What? It was dumb and boring, and it's not even worth talking about. I only picked it because it was a because it was there, and I should have just skipped it all together. It just wasn't even worth it. Oh um, come on, you got to. But I will say, me. well, no, 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 no. The, the 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 we're talking about we're talking about the highlights there. We're talking about the five star games. I ain't I ain't dealing with any two or one star games here. Um, we 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 did though. We did though. We did get to reserve. You got to reserve. I, I I may even be as bold to say your favorite racing game of all time, Crash Team Racing. Is that fair uh, to say? It is. It is definitely not my best <laughs> my best kart racing game of all time. It's not. It's not your favorite, but it's up there. Is that is it, it's it's better than you give it credit for? I tell you, nah, I, I like I like I, I like Crash Team exactly. Racing. Mm-hmm. I, what? Oh, anyway, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about the that. original. Not the, well, we're not kind of like yeah, it's a Mario Kart ripoff. It's uh, it's fine. Fine. We're not going to talk about the original. Uh-huh. So I, I did play uh, Crash Team Racing. They give you a practice run, and then they give you, a, uh, you know, they give you, a, it's it's one versus, you know, other seven is eight of you. Mm-hmm. And you get a practice run just to get a feel for it, and then you get the real race. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the practice run, I got like third, fourth place. Uh, and I was ready for the real race. And in the real race, I was number one for one and a half stages. And the force field got me because I'm trying to play it like Mario Kart and you can't play this game with Mario Kart. It feels good. It looks good. I mean, I was on this. I was 
essentially what you would call the rainbow stage, right? Because mm-hmm. it, it seemed like a rainbow stage. Yeah, it was. It yeah, seemed yeah. like it was one of the hardest stages. And I was doing good. I was doing good. And then I got caught in a force field and never got it back. And I, I never got n- number one back. Yeah. So. I mean, I was, I, was, I was right behind you cheering for you. You know, as soon as I was done playing Mortal Kombat 11, which is awesome, by the way, I came running over and, you know, you were kind of doing your race. I was there cheering you on. You made it to third. I'm like, damn, may take first. But then you slipped a little bit, you know. I slipped on a real race. Oh, the good. practice could have, I could have podiumed. You could have podiumed. I could have podiumed. Uh, but I, I got the, I got a chance to play Mortal Kombat 11 the next day, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because we couldn't get any of the VR games, and I played it on the PS4. Right, it's really good, right? I, I, it's really good. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little nervous because I thought I was gonna get my, you know, my butt handed to me. <laughs> right, right. Because everyone's cause there, kind of waiting to play, watching you play. You well, know, it's, by it's not like you're at home. Well, it's by appointment, and you're not playing a computer. You're playing against someone else. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. always going against the human. And me, and me and this guy were playing, and I got, and you know, like we we split every round. Okay, we played three rounds. We split every round, and he beat me. He he beat me the first round. Two out, you know, two out of three. Mm-hmm. And they give you. You're only supposed to have two, two, two fights. So the second one. I beat him. I was like, wow, I, I beat him. I was impressed. And none of us could do fatalities. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I forgot one of the, the button fatalities. What I didn't know they is had, they, had, they, fatali- had, the they, had, the, they had the move list. They had the move list. They had the move list. Uh-huh. I didn't know they had the move list. To be fair, to, to be fair, uh, the no guy one, right no behind me. Us. No one prepped us. No, well, one prepped no, no us. I didn't get I didn't get any prep either. But to be fair, to be fair, the guy before me, when when he beat the crap out of his opponent, he paused the game. He was looking at Johnny Cage's stuff, and he did the Johnny Cage fatality, and it was great. You know, it was the whole like acting thing, right? Where he's like trying to film a yeah. movie, so he's basically trying to do the fatality, and they're like, "Cut, cut!" And I'm like, "Oh, that's fucking awesome!" So when I went in, when I went into play, and I obviously I beat the other dude, right? Because you, you know, you have to. I'm like, "All right, let me go ahead and we go ahead and pause this, and uh, you know, figure out figure out what Baraka's fatality was, and uh, let's just say." Uh, Let's just say uh, um, Scorpion's not going to be doing any face modeling anytime soon. <laughs> well, well, we did, we both didn't want to pause the game like on each other or anything mm-hmm. like that. We just wanted mm-hmm. to go through. Sure. Uh, and we, you know, so we had we had two fights, and then we were just sitting there like, no one's kicking us off. You want to have a third one and settle there the you score? Go. You want to yeah, settle yeah. the score? Right. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And nice. I'm like all super nice. nervous. I'm like, yeah, now he's gonna get real. And I beat him. There Me, I won. Nice. I two settled the score. Two out of three. I came back. Nice. And I won. I triumphed. Great. Great. I was the man. Mm-hmm. All right. This is my four touchdowns in a high school game. Al oh, my Bundy. God. Okay. You're a uh, regular <laughs> Al Bundy of Paul Kai. <laughs> you, you, you're damn right. Okay. This oh. is my Mortal Kombat story. Right. All right. Well, I was going to say, sadly enough, we didn't get a chance to play Mortal Kombat on the Switch. Mm-hmm. It looked good. It really looked good. Um, and it was, they had like a whole, they had it separated. With all the like Nintendo games like Yoshi and um, oh, Cuphead, and mm-hmm. they, they they had a whole big Nintendo area, well, and then they had a side Nintendo area mm-hmm. where that they had, had like Mortal Kombat, Assassin's Creed, and, uh, and uh, Hellblade, 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 Hellblade. Hellblade was sacrificed. Yeah. So so how did you how did you how did you dig the uh, you know the controls and the whatever else like like it felt I mean I thought it felt really it good. felt it felt really good it it felt more of the same with Mortal Kombat X, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah, the yeah, definitely. Difference... I mean, it, it felt just as smooth. It, it felt, felt just, it felt, it felt just as smooth. The difference yeah. is that that last. I forgot what they call it off the top of my head. It's the mm-hmm. Pox Packs. So you know the Pox, the, pox the Packs played the Pox Peak, the Pex Peak, set ten times fast. The Pox Packs. Pox. Oh my God, he's talking in tongues. He's talking in tongues. I am. I am. I am. <laughs> uh, I, I, I I forgot the name of the new move. That yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like like a final touch or a last touch. I I, I know yeah, the thing well, you're thinking of. Yeah, when when your energy goes down, uh, if you catch him with a with, with this move, uh, mm-hmm. you can catch. You know, you can essentially catch up to that person, but you can only use it once in in once like the battle. whole once yeah. per battle. So uh, I keep calling it a fight. I meant to call it a battle, but right. uh, yeah, you can only use it once. Thing. So I you know I found myself low at some mm-hmm. point and mm-hmm. used it and I was like oh this is awesome it, it, it took half his life yeah. right because I I, I I didn't even I had no idea what I was doing but mm-hmm. I figured it out 
And I was like, this is awesome. I like this. I like this feature. And he caught me. He caught yeah. me with it. And I was like, on one hit, one hit to die. And I made it. And I still, I still took that round. Oh, so. nice. Nice. So, so I do know that, um, cause I was reading up, I was, you know, re- reading up on people's notes about PAX and, you know, their kind of thoughts on it. Cause everybody, everybody was there, right? You know, IGN was there and GameSpot was there and, you know, all the YouTubers we saw were a whole there. Bunch and... of, we saw a whole bunch of guys. We saw, whole, I we saw did. IGN do the, do the, do the news segments. And I thought that was awesome to see that happen. Yeah. So, so I forget, I forget who I was, I forget who I was reading, but, uh, they were, they were saying like, MK11 on the Switch is real good. Like, it plays real nice. It looks real good. So, if you were well, thinking about getting it for the Switch, I mean, so far, like, all signs point to yes. All right? I'll well, say that. As, as we waited in the, the big Nintendo line, mm-hmm. right, for the big, the, the big booth they had, the big area mm-hmm. they had, uh, I did watch from afar <laughs> on the right-hand side people playing Mortal Kombat 11 on the Switch on a TV and it looked good. It looked yeah. really good. Yeah, solid. solid. Uh, I mean, we weren't um, that far away. I, I, I make it seem like it was so far away, but it was like yeah. right there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, it looks really good. I didn't see yeah. any any lag or anything. Mm-hmm. I just, I want to play my fighting games with the PS4 controller, with the DualShock. I'm, so, I'm with you. I'm with you. So I'm, I'm definitely going to get more. I'm going to skip the Switch and get more combat on the, right. the PS4. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but like I said, also... we waited, but like I said, we waited online, uh, the big Nintendo line, and we we got to play. You got to play for the first time because I bought the game while we were in Boston. I don't. Uh, I don't know Yoshi, why you couldn't wait till you got home. Yoshi, we, I, I've been playing. I, I mean, matter of fact, I was playing Yoshi's Crafted World in the hotel. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I, bought it, I, I, bought it I, I remember it you got out. it like Friday night, and you're like, I'm already like five worlds in. Like, yeah. Damn. So, but we got a chance to play it together. How do you like it? Come on, uh, tell I, the truth. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. You know, I'm I'm not going to be picking it up anytime soon because I know it's a little bit on the easier side. You know, it's it's kind of like the Kirby games, right? They're they're skewed towards a younger audience. But I was I was pleasantly surprised, right? They they we really play co-op because we turned the joy cons around and play co-op. That's right. That's right. I mean, you can uh, it's it's 2.5D. So it uses the. There's like three different planes that you can go into. You can go into the like you start off in the middle plane. You can go forward. You can go back, and you 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 have to kind of like um, you have to knock into environmental objects to open up pads to move around and whatnot. So I you know it was really cute, and uh, you know the graphics are really cool. Like it it it's a solid game. It's a solid game. Do I have time to go through this and, you know, spend all the time and, like, you know, get all the stuff in the game? Probably not, but it it's solid. It's well, solid. It's, well, it's solid. you know what? It's, it's, it's solid. It's a really good game. I love the Yoshi series. I love all the Yoshi games. I've beat all the Yoshi Woolly War games on the mm-hmm. 3DS and on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let's do, like, a like a quick review roundup. For Yoshi's Crafted World, I sure. love it that much. Right, sure. it came out on it's on the Switch, only the came Switch out, came out. It, came out. Came out Friday. Yeah, well, and, and Nintendo came out last Friday, Friday. Uh, and has a Metacritic score of eighty. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's pretty solid. Uh, pretty solid. That's a pretty solid game, right? Nintendo Insider gave it a ninety. U.S. Gamer gave it an eighty. Gamespot gave it an eighty as well. IGN uh, on a little bit on the low side gave it a seventy-eight. But the outlier, okay, out of all the outlets, because it, it's a it's a solid eight across the board from, uh, you know, sort of the average. If you look at all the outlets, it's about an eight mm-hmm. uh, or a little lower. Fandom.com gave it a 60. And the reason why they gave it a, uh, the reason why they gave it a 60, they said it looks great. It looks cute. Every, the mm-hmm. visuals are amazing. They just, they know it's skewed for a younger audience, not a more mature audience that wants, uh, you know, a uh, challenging platformer platforming. But they, because they, they didn't really, it was too easy. They gave it a 60 because it was too easy. They thought all the creativity was put into the aesthetic, right? The visuals yeah. Yeah, and yeah. not the platforming. It doesn't get harder. The further you get in the game, it does the the platforming doesn't get any harder, any challenging at all. I right? um, and, and it doesn't I, matter what mode you put it in because it's really only two modes, mm-hmm. normal, normal and easy. And no matter can, what mode you're understand. in, it's just super easy. I can understand where they're coming from. Like even just a little bit that I played, like, you need a a nice gradual 
uh, incline of of difficulty, right? You know, you need needs to ramp up a little bit and whatnot, right? Obviously, it's not going to be Dark Souls. You know, it's not going to be it's not going to be Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice or anything like that. But there should be a little bit of challenge, right? You know, well, well then, well then, um, well that that gives me that takes me to another argument, which we didn't even pre discuss before we did the show. But since you mm-hmm. bring up uh, uh, you know, uh, Sekiro. Mm-hmm. There's a big argument right now of why don't they put uh, easy mode in Sekiro so casual fans can enjoy the game. Right. Then and, and, and it's a big this is a big outcry of no if if it's too hard don't play it it's not for you. Then I can say the same thing about Yoshi. You know, like it's they shouldn't put a hard mode in it if it's too easy. It's not for you. Don't play it. Right. Well, I mean, it's, so it's I can not... I can make I can make the reverse argument. I'm just saying I can make the reverse argument. Well, I'm, I not, think. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying, hey, like the easy difficulty and the whatever make it more difficult. But I think what fandom is trying to say is that from the outset, that's about as difficult as it gets. Right. So it seems like they're saying that every 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 level is the same level of difficulty. Right. So the. You know, the first level to the last level, it's it's kind of flat, right? I'm not well, saying to make it well, super difficult. Well, you know what? But... Sekiro, Sekiro is tough from the first level to the last level, you know? So I could say the same thing about that. Like, it's it's like Bloodborne and the Dark Souls games. I mean, you say I buy everything. I have Bloodborne because I didn't know what it I didn't know. I had no idea what it was going to be when I first mm-hmm. bought it. Uh, mm-hmm. I have the Dark Souls games only because I got them in a bundle sort of when I in a garage sale. Mm-hmm. And I, I got it really cheap. I that's not those aren't my type of games unless it has an easy mode so I can enjoy the game. I'm not going to play them. Uh, Mega Man 11. One of the reasons why I really liked it because it had I, an easy mode. I can change the difficulty down e- uh, down to easy when I got sort of to the last boss just because I didn't really have time to figure out. I'm a grown. I'm a GMG grown man game. I don't really have that much time to figure out how to get through the Wily world. Right. The Wily yeah. World. Yeah. I mean, it's I, not. I, it's I not put it down to easy just so I can get through it. It's not a bad, it's not a bad ask from the fans, right? You know, and and you gotta you gotta kind of take it as it is. Like everyone needs to, everyone needs to, I think, chill out a little bit on all that stuff because everyone's everyone again. Everyone is jumping, jumping and taking up pitchforks and whatever else, right? Like, is it is it bad if they put an easy mode in the game? I mean, maybe not. You know, it obviously requires some yeah. extra programming and whatnot and this and that, but you could do it. You know, and then you have a game that's accessible to everybody. So I get I get what fans are talking about, you know, for sure. Um, my stance is from what you said before is that, you know, if if there's something you don't like about the game, right, or there's there's a whether it be the difficulty or the aesthetic or the or a gameplay mechanic or whatever, I'll just go, you know what, like, eh, there's so many other games out there. Like, I'll, I'll go ahead and hard pass on it if it just well, that- doesn't fit. I was yeah. just trying to play devil's advocate. I oh, believe. I, no, no, no. I, believe... I, 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 I understand, and and it is, it is, it is kind of pertinent to. It is kind of pertinent to the argument for sure. You know? I, I, I am under belief they should put an easy mode in uh, Sekiro, just like on God of War and uh, Spider Man. Uh, was it Spider Man? Mm-hmm. Where they they put a harder, harder mode, right? Like they they made it even more difficult. Like, yeah. what's wrong? What's wrong with putting an easy mode so us casual fans can? Well, enjoy they do. The story they do. I mean, I mean, God of War definitely has an easy mode. I know, no, I know, but they put a harder, harder mode, right? Yeah, the, the next level harder yeah. mode later on. Yeah. So people who want a, a really tough challenge, can and, have and that I think that's play God of War. You know, I think that's so why can't they? So why can't they put an easy mode for fine. people like me who are casual fans? As a casual fan, right? Well, so they, I, well I, they they can and should, you know, but. <laughs> Um, it, it, it does, I want to enjoy the story. It's very I mean, difficult I, to do. Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we honest, don't have to get, we don't have to get crazy. I don't, wanna, into I don't it. get, I don't get too crazy, in it, but I have no idea what the story of Bloodborne, uh, Bloodborne is. I have no right. idea what the Dark Souls story is. I'm well, never going to know what the Sekiro the, story is. The only thing, the only thing I was going to say is that, and you know, I play games for the story. Right. Right. The only thing I was going to say about that, I love platform. The, the only thing I was going to say about all this is that. You kind of need to build that from the outset, right? You need to you need to say from the outset when you're developing a game to say, okay, we're gonna have a easy or normal mode, and we're also gonna have a hard mode, right? Because basically, what you're trying to do is to, at the moment, what the fans want is they want the square peg to go inside the round hole at this point, right? 
And, you know, the game was built upon like, okay, it's going to be tough, right? There's going to be mechanics in there, right? It's, 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 there's going to be a hell of a ton of stealth. And they're, you know, they're building it around that. So you got to be sneaky. You got to go around these guys. You got to slit their throats and, and, you know, all these other things and whatnot. And like, that's what the game is predicated on. So to say now, like, okay, let's go ahead and put an easy mode in there. Like there's gameplay mechanics that are going to start breaking down because of that. Well, where I don't, I don't disagree with you by any means, but I think it needs to be a consideration early on in development as opposed to like, let's try and put it in afterwards. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I, I understand that. Yeah. And, and they should have done it in mine, in my view, just like, you know, again, we've, we've made games harder for people who love that challenge. Why not make a game a little easier for people who just want to enjoy the story? Because I mean, sure. that's, that's me. But sure. um, I got to say, a game that I did play at PAX that surprised the heck out of me. I'm not going to lie. This mm-hmm. wasn't really on my radar. Mm-hmm. That was Biomutant. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Biomutant yeah, yeah, yeah. was awesome. And we, play, we played it on PC with these bootleg Xbox-looking controllers. We did. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was about. We uh, did. Yeah, they, it, they were not they were not great, uh, but the game was. So I felt like know, this was like a more real realistic ratchet and clean. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it, yeah, yeah. I mean it did kind of it did kind of feel like that. It was definitely definitely had triple A visuals, definitely had solid gameplay. Um it was like third person, right? Third 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 person action, like over the shoulder. Uh, you get to create your own character and and do some basic stat stuff. So, you know, you kind of you kind of go out and you get some weapons along the little intro mission thing. Uh, you get to ride a rocket briefly. <laughs> uh, so it was pretty and, cool. They and, had melee combat yeah. and 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 you and get the kinda, and you get to be in a bubble slime. Uh, you do get to be in this weird bubble slime thing. Yeah, yeah. It I, was I, it was a cross between uh, Ratchet and Clank, <clears throat> a realistic Ratchet and Clank meets dynasty warriors right because they had a lot of enemies that you can a lot of little enemies that you kill that you had yep. to really kill mm-hmm. um I, I i thought it was cool i really liked it i really enjoyed it you you wanted to wait in line for it i was like okay we're here right yeah it was, it was good man of, i think it was Listen. the end of friday and i wasn't about it and you convinced me and i'm glad you did because it was one of my surprise games that i really like every game every game that i said dan you need to you need to go ahead and try this you were like this game is awesome so and we'll talk about welcome. more of that in this show you're we'll talk welcome. more about yeah that yeah we have we have a we have a lot more stuff to go through we right? have a lot more we got a lot more through. stuff to go through um, but but you did but i will say we did have an appointment with we did have an appointment with yacht club games and yep. you got a chance to play one of my favorite games you played i don't know Shovel why you didn't play this of cards. i don't know why you didn't play this you're like nah you play i said i said all right yeah, they have well, to I wanted, do I wanted, that. I really wanted to. I wanted to talk to the. I wanted to talk to you know the guy at Yacht Club Games about the game more mm-hmm. so. Uh, mm-hmm. I sh- I should have played it, but yeah, I've been. I mean, I, I've it's... I've stayed away. I'll be honest. I stayed away from any spoilers, any story. I didn't really want to hear anything because I love the Shovel Knight I mean, series. This... Specter Knight, I thought was I thought was the best, better than Shovel Knight. Was yeah. it really like? In, I didn't really dig Plague Knight, so I was kind of staying away a little bit. Well, from I mean, it, Plague Knight, I don't Plague be surprised Knight was definitely when they... Plague Knight was definitely the worst out of all of them. The, the, you know, the mechanic yeah. was weird, and you know, it was really difficult. It was the, definitely the most difficult out of out of the three uh, different characters you could uh, play as. So uh, I just I want as... I when wow. when when the game comes out, I want to be fresh into it. I didn't really want to. I didn't want it spoiled for me, to be honest. I mean, there's, I not, love there's not much to Spectre spoil, Knight. like. Well, you just know. the mechanics and the feel. I kind of want to just wait until it comes out. So that's right. the re- that's the real reason why I didn't, I didn't right. play it. So I mean, like 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 this time around, you play as King Knight, right? His his main maneuver is a shoulder tackle, which is great. So you just kind of like you kind of you know you put your shoulder down and slide into enemies, which is uh, which is uh, kind of neat. And uh, you can got... dash, right? What's you that? Can slide and in... you can dash. I see yep. you dash. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. You can definitely well, like the, you can do the shoulder tackle in the air. I think to do like a dash thing, and you can like if you shoulder dash into a wall, then you can kind of jump up from there. So, you know, that took a little bit to get used to. That wasn't necessarily that intuitive, right? Because you figure you shoulder dash into a wall, you're probably going to fall down, but you can jump out of that, which is uh, kind of nice. And he had some other special ability too. I forget what it was, but he had some sort of mana attack, uh, which I thought was his main attack, but the shoulder tackle was the main attack. 
Um, it's the same Shovel Knight, you know. It's 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 yeah, it's it's solid all around. They did say, and we did notice that uh, the levels were a lot shorter, right? Uh, but they said there's a lot more levels, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Well, you only get you get like three save points compared to the five save points. So the, the levels are a lot shorter, but you got a lot more levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, you know, they're they're a little more like bite size. Um, we got to I got to play one of the two. Uh, it was really cool though. And then the other one, because um, they had they had a couple games there. Uh, Cyber well, Shadow was the big reveal, right? That was the ninja yeah yeah we we um i I, I think you i think you think you think you brought it up a couple episodes ago uh yacht club teased um this new game with 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 uh like a ninja in a in a in a ruined city city, right but they're Uh, publishing they're not making the game they're publishing it right exactly exactly and we got to becoming more uh, of a publisher we got to meet the creator because he was there so you know we were kind of talking with him a little bit and it was a one man team. Well, yeah. one man team as far as coding, and I think he had like a designer. Sure. Uh, and you could tell he was a Ninja Gaiden fan. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. He- I mean, like, like, like the whole entire time, I'm thinking, "Wow, the messenger! Wow, the messenger!" Just, just in the visuals and the fact that you're a ninja, and the fact that it was essentially a one man team for both games. It was a passion project. Um, they both love Ninja Gaiden. Like, there was so many parallels between the two. But surprisingly, the game feels different, right? It definitely well, this has is a more, different tone. Well, this is more of an educating where uh, the messenger, it's less enemies. The mm-hmm. level, the level itself is difficult to traverse, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's it's you may have two enemies on screen, but just to try to get past to the next, to the you know to get out of that level, mm-hmm. to get to the next level is the difficult part, right? Because you you have mm-hmm. to do precise jumping, precise flat flat uh, platforming. Maybe you have to jump. And f- and float at the same time, right? At the precise time where this is more of Ninja Gaiden, where you have a lot more enemies on screen. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know, th- where you got to be skillful and 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 you know, hit them and run, hit them and run, stick to the wall, jump around, and you have to make a choice: to, are you going to try to kill everyone? Or are you going to try to, you know, maneuver away from them to get to the next line? So yeah, yeah. And the other the other cool thing was, um, I know that. Uh, I got some power ups, and they're like, "Oh yeah, so that one's like a temporary power up, right?" And then he, I believe, they also said that there's permanent power ups that you can get as well. Uh, so that was kind of neat, right? So like temporary ones will fade away after a while, or if you die, you don't get them saved. Permanent power ups carry over, right? And they're always there from level to level. If you die, I believe they're still there, like they're they're kind of permanent in that way. So so that was kind of neat. Uh, rock and soundtrack, like really really tight soundtrack visuals. You know, visuals are good. You know, they're they're they, the visuals feel a lot like the eight bit parts of the messenger. They feel a lot of feel a lot like Ninja Gaiden. You know, feel a lot like King of Cards. You know, they they all kind of have that similar eight bit palette. You know, the, the chunky pixels and whatnot. But I mean, it looked good. It looked good. I was in. No, I was in. Yeah, it looked real good, and it's coming out on Steam, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. There you go. Of course, this is going to be just like the messenger. And I'll buy it when it comes out, and then a year later it's going to be out uh, physically, and I'm going to be mad. <laughs> yep, and I'm going to have to buy it. That's why I never bought the. It's not, why I never bought the messenger? I knew it was going to come out physical. And a year later, it. right? Yep. Yeah. So, Dave, while we were there, real quick, did we get? Did you get any good pickups? Because I know I picked. It, I got me my limited run fix, baby. You did. I, you I, did. I, I do. It's a tradition. Every year, we must go to the limit limited run booth as soon as, <laughs> you're, you're, as, soon as it opens. I mean. You're like a kid in a candy store, right? You're or uh, just waiting for I, waiting for missed, Santa Claus to come down that chimney. I missed I missed the pre order for this. I missed the pre order for this. Give me this. Give me this. Give me this. I had to yep. be I had to be really good. I had to be, I promised I would be really good. I know. I know. I know. This you, year, you in large up, part, man. I didn't have I, I didn't have a big I didn't have a big book bag or suitcase right. to fit it in. Right. See, you cleaned up. I got cleaned out. All right. You know the story. I didn't take. Didn't take everyone's advice. Didn't take my own advice. Didn't I take knew my it was advice. too good to be true. I didn't take everybody's advice. You know, like like you you were even like Dave. I don't know about that. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I uh, I tried to be slick and ahead of going to PAX, I was looking at uh, listings up in Boston, right on all the um, all the all the used sites. Um, not necessarily to eBay, but things like Let Go and Offer Up and whatnot, because. 
you know, you can you can search within a particular area. I was searching within the greater Boston area, trying to find people selling stuff. And I found a lot. I found a lot that was really good. That was too good to be true. Uh, one of the games in the lot, I will just say in this, 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 this kind of, this kind of lets you know how good the lot was. One of the items in the lot was Mega Man 4 complete in box. And the box looked pretty good. Had the manual, had the game inside. And I was like, ooh. So I started talking with this guy. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Long story short, I am at $165. Ooh. Yep. Yep. I did the dumb thing and I wired money. Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't wire it the proper way where I had any recourse. Uh, it was all it was all this set up to fail, right? There was so many red flags, and I want I don't want to go into all of it because I still I'm still pretty salty. Right? I understand. I understand. You're salty. salty. You're salty. salty. But but you did pick up Salt and Sanctuary. I did. I did. So I'm extra salty. <laughs> You're I'm extra, extra salty. salty. Right. Uh, so that was that bro, was a uh, that was a limited run release. Um, and. Well, I just want to say for you collectors out oh, there, yeah. Or, or yeah, 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 collectors yeah, yeah. who are starting to, you know, if you're starting to collect pro mm-hmm. tip, if you don't know somebody, mm-hmm. right. And you want to PayPal them, do not friends and family them. Someone you don't know pay. Yep. Like for me, if do I don't know thing. you, I'm going to do the merchant thing and pay the fee that they charge the person on the other side. So if they charge the other person $10, like in your case, you paid 160. If they charge the other person ten dollars, yep, I would have paid one hundred and seventy. I would have covered his ten dollar charge, mm-hmm. just so I have some recourse. If just in case he screws me, like when we do the Instagram, uh, you know, claims and stuff. If I don't know you, I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna friends and family you. You have, I have to. You have to. I have to earn your. You have to earn my trust, right? So that's a hundred percent right. That's a hundred percent right. You know, so we have guys that we do the Instagram claims with, with the retro games. And, mm-hmm. you know, I pay them. They sent me the games right away, right? They even uh, sent me a screenshot of the shipping, right? So yep. then it's like, all right, well, yep. then I trust you, our friends and family. Why? What, I'm not going to waste money. It's all official. It's all above board. And, uh, yeah, I, I basically did everything wrong in this case. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I should have known. Like, if things don't look... If things, if two plus two is an equaling four, right? If the equation doesn't, doesn't look right to you, call their bluff, right? Be like, look, I'm not too sure about this or whatever. I need a, I need like a proof of life, right? I need some sort of, need some sort of, I need to know, I need to know that I'm getting what I'm getting, right? And, you know, I asked him for, asked him for some proof and whatnot. And he, he ended up sending me some pictures of exactly what I asked for, but I have a feeling you just pulled them from the internet, you know. Well, you this is what I would have did. That. This is what I would have did. I would have said, you know, and you can do this. I can say, please send me a picture of, like, if like if this is NES games, please send me a picture of the back mm-hmm. so I can see the screws. And yep. please and please write your screen name on a piece of paper and yep. take a picture of yep. the paper with your screen name and yep. the screws. So yep. I know it's your picture, not something you pulled off the internet. Right, exactly, so, exactly. And if they won't most, do that, then they're not going to get my money. Because most of the most of the most of the pictures are going to be at the front because everyone wants to see the label of the game, right? But a and, true collector um, wants to see the back, right? Exactly. They want the to see true, make, true collector to see wants to off. see right because that's that's where a lot of the mistakes are. If if it happened to be a fake, right? I could have I could have certainly gotten all this stuff, and it could have all turned out to be a fake. Like you know, people do that. They got a brick right? in the box. You yeah, they got a brick in the box. Sure, but uh, sure. So so. Lesson learned, right? My, learned. my, I, I have suffered so that others may live, Dan. That's the takeaway. That's the positive. That's the takeaway. <laughs> That's uh, the positive. Well, I, well, I, I cleaned up. Well, I didn't, I cleaned up at limited run somewhat, right? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't buy a whole bunch, I didn't buy a whole bunch of games. Like uh-huh. the, the one Vita game I got was Rabby Ribby. Right? Mm-hmm. I, that was the one Vita game I got, but I did go to GameStop mm-hmm. and I did pick up, like I said, Yoshi's Crafted World on a switch so uh, i got yeah. and i got the walking dead the final season on the mm-hmm. switch uh, mm-hmm. i got it on switch just because i played i love the walking dead i love i love it uh the walking the tt game even though this was uh skybound right? i think it's skybound is the new uh, studio yeah. or the one yeah they took it over the they one who's over. taking it over yeah yeah, or yeah. Took it over. uh i even did i even got a super mario wii japanese figure so that was like five bucks so i had nice. to pick that up i had the last one too but at limited run, I did 
you know, Rabbi Ribby was for the Vita, but I picked up uh, the the Butcher for the PS4. It's sort of like a Doom game. Like if you like mm-hmm. Doom and Quake, that's sort of mm-hmm. in that same realm. Picked up Tacoma. I have this free on Xbox and PS4 from uh, you had Xbox to get Live. Physical. I understand. You X- had to get Xbox the Live and uh, PlayStation Plus, but I had to get the physical Bastion, which I thought I had. I oh, didn't. So have. good. So and good. I couldn't resist picking up Dragon's Lair Trilogy on PS4. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, man. Do you know that? Um, do you know you can play Bastion inside your Chrome browser? I uh, did not know that until. And now. it's really good. Yeah, yeah. It was one of their first like uh, browser game initiative type things, right? And it oh, runs wow. like really well. It's really performing. Didn't know that. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you go. And and we picked up a game that we're giving away as our April giveaway. That's right. That's right. So we had mentioned it. Uh, we had mentioned it last week on the show. The contest is still running uh, for the next two weeks. Uh, you need to go to uh, Instagram. Right. We are giving away a copy of Shantae and the Pirate's Curse for the Switch. Brand new from Limited Run Games from us to you. Head over to our Twitter. I'm sorry. I, say, I said Instagram, didn't I? Head over to our Twitter. Uh, you will see the post about Shantae. You need to follow us. You need to retweet that post and tag two friends. That's it. And you will be entered to win uh, Shantae the Pirate's Curse. Uh, that uh, drawing will be uh, in two weeks. So I guess uh, two episodes from now, uh, we'll be announcing the winner on the show. And uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, if you have a Switch and uh, you're looking e- for some episode, free games, Episode 160. Uh, that will be announced in episode 160. Yeah, nice nice round even number. So uh, good luck to everyone involved. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right. So why don't we take a break mm-hmm. and come back. We'll get into all the indie games we played at that. And we're back. All right. Let's get into all the indie games we saw at PAX Mm because we saw a lot. And I just want to (laughs) say. Yeah, we did. (laughs) I just want to say we we, we saw we saw a lot of indie games and we're not going to be able to cover every single indie game uh, we saw. But we definitely picked we picked a few that we wanted to go over on the show. The, the ones the ones that really kind of stood out to us or, you know, the ones we kind of want to highlight and talk about and kind of gush about a little bit. So. I would say the you know how I love my uh, Metroid style games and no I'm not coining Metroidvania I'm sorry it's it's we talked it's about it's already this. been coined it's just, Dan it's Metroid it's already it's been Metroid. coined I've, I'm I'm uncoining it it is it is I don't I don't think Metroid that's how that style. works I don't think that's it's how just that Metroid works. style I'm starting well, the campaign I'm starting I, like the I said campaign. before like I said before Hashtag just like Metroid I said before now. like I said before Super Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night are basically, in my eyes, the best examples of that style of gameplay. Thus, it's the portmanteau. It's the Metroidvania, right? I know. I know you hate it. You hate it. You're wincing right now. I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna go with just the Metroid style. That's that's what it's called, Metroid style. Well, whatever it is, whatever it is, and I know what you're gonna say. And and and, and you know, uh, there was a ton of roguelikes and a ton of Metroid style games at PAX East more so than ever. Right. Yeah. Felt like, like there was a ton. There was a, there was a ton. And I gotta be honest. I really, I, I really liked a lot of them. Like mm-hmm. I was, I was all over those type of games. I think that mm-hmm. was the theme. The overall theme for me of this year's PAX was Metroid style games. Yeah. Roguelike, yeah. Right. And the, so, uh... the first one that caught my eye, like literally like I think, Day one, Thursday at PAX, we went straight for the indie games. And the first thing that caught my eye was this game called Ruby in the Wayward Mirror. Mm-hmm. I think it was right. part of the PAX Rising section. Yes. Uh, which is kind of a was. special like standout area and whatnot. It's it's uh, games that I think were kind of hand-selected. It's a special area. Only so many indie games get to go in there. And uh, you know, Ruby was a part of that. Ruby the Wayward Mirror. You described it. I think you described it really well. You said it was Metroid. Meets Shantae, meets Axiom Verge, and we were kind of talking to the developer, and he's he's like, "That is a very apt description of what this game is." I want to add uh, something to that. I want to mm-hmm. add something to that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say Axiom Verge meets Shantae meets Celeste. 
Mm-hmm. Meets I could, Metroid. A hundred percent. I get a hundred percent. See that, you know, and and I think. I think that kind of holds true to the art style. Um, that kind of holds true to the sound. Uh, that definitely holds true to the gameplay elements, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I am so. I was so in the the little bit that we got to play, the little demo that we got to play. I was so actually mm-hmm. into the story somewhat, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like it was so because uh, I have no idea what the story is, but I it kept me wondering. I'm like, why are we chasing this person? Why? Why? Why is this? Why am I fighting this person? Like, I, I, I. I honestly was like, yo, I want to know more. I want to know more. Like, it was so mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like a 2D Metroid-style fantasy platformer is how he described it. Mm-hmm. Uh, can, it's, uh, well, go ahead. Well, it's it's still, it's really early. It's it's nowhere near done. All right. So Yeah. I think well, I was he, just, just going to say that you can find the demo for uh, PC, uh, for all you PC gamers out there. You can find the demo for it online now. You want to download the demo? Uh, it was pretty polished, I think, from what we saw, right? Oh, the mechanic. The first thing when I play these type of games, I want to know how the mechanics are. like, mm-hmm. like uh, how well can I jump and platform? Mm-hmm. And it, it it did a really good job. Like it, it really felt tight. Yeah. Uh, you know, jumping, platforming. I really, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm really digging. I'm really digging this, and I'm digging the level design, the art style. Uh, you know, I, again, I love these type. Of, I love these style of games, and this kicked it off for me with yep. PAX. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the good news is this is coming out for every single platform. PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and your Samsung refrigerator, right? It's crazy. <laughs> you can uh, get uh, it on all seven major platforms. Can, what, I mean, can it not, can it, can it not come out on Alexa, too, some, some way, somehow? Some way, well, hey, you know, look, look, if Skyrim can come out on Alexa, anything can come out on Alexa, right? <laughs> uh the second game that actually caught my eye too, again another game that's nowhere near finished. By the way, both uh, the, the you know Ruby and the Wayward Mira nowhere near finished, and Panzer Paladin. Uh, this game from Tribute Games Inc. Mm-hmm. Uh, super early in development, sort of had an early built first level. Uh, everyone who played it said we all had the same thing. This is like this is Blaster Master. Blaster Master Zero with a mech instead of right. a, instead of a car or a right. tank. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, the 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 booth was super big. You know, they had these had these big giant standees, and the game from afar looked really good. Right? I was like, oh, you know, you can jump in and out of the mechs, um, just like in you know Blaster Master and whatnot. And you know, the art style was very Shovel Knight esque, had that eight bit kind of feel to it. Um, it, it looked really like polished from afar. I didn't actually get hands on with it. So it can I was be very a little, surprised. I was very surprised. The, mechani- when you said that. the, me- the mechanics can be a little bit more tighter. They can make mm-hmm. it tighter. I'm not going to mm-hmm. lie. Uh, was it, was you're... it floaty jumping or, ve- or very, um, very, uh, tight jumping, very tight jumping. It was. Yeah. They they got to yeah, work a little bit the physics. Yeah. A bit. Uh, but I will say, I mean, it, again, it is Blaster Master just with a mech. So you're like in this mech suit which is more of like a, a suit of armor mm-hmm. right and and you're going through and you have all these different abilities and you can switch swords because uh again you don't you're not in a, a tank like in blast master where you're shooting mm-hmm. uh so you're in a mech that doesn't have guns it's all swords yeah so. no no i saw that i saw like people picking up like long swords and great swords and whatnot and i guess you can only have one at a time right no no you can switch out oh you, you can, can. Switch them out yeah, nice. yeah yeah you can switch them nice. out and when you're when you're out of the mech, right? You you sort of have like this laser whip, where it helps you to platform and you use it sort of like to uh, to progress through the level. I think that is how they described it. Uh, also, if your mech gets destroyed and you don't find like sort of that save state, so you mm-hmm. can get a new mech, mm-hmm. you can go fight the boss. You could keep going <laughs> without without the mech, huh? You, yeah, I went straight to the boss without the mech, and you know uh, the boss in this early build first level was a dragon. And guess who didn't stand a chance with my whip? <laughs> <laughs> right. I could, um, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, I would say that's probably uh, it's probably a bad idea to do that. But um, <laughs> I th- this I could honestly, I'm not gonna lie. As I was playing this, I was like, I, this could have been like a Super Nintendo game. Right. It, it it looked just like a Super Nintendo game to me. Right. I was like, this could have been on SNES. Right. This could have been on SNES Classic. We came out 25 years earlier. So 
while you were um, while you were playing Panzer Paladin, right? There was a game that was right across the way that I'm like, Dan, I'm gonna go ahead and break off. I'm gonna play this game. You're like, all right. I know cool. you disappeared. You disappeared on me. You didn't get a chance to play Panzer Paladin. No, I, like, I didn't. I didn't. I, I went. I went. I went like two feet away. I just went across the aisle to the other side, and uh, there was this game called No Straight Roads, right? And I'm like, it looked really cool, and it had sound blasting out of their booth, and I'm like, oh, what is this game, right? So, I met up with the uh, I met up with the dev, uh, who he, uh, you know, the the guy who headed the studio up and whatnot. This this guy Juan uh, Hamzer, I think, was his last name. Uh, he was like the lead developer on Final Fantasy 15, right? So, you know, me and him kind of had a moment over that. Uh, oh, and... my God. That's right. You, you, I remember I came in and you guys were like just fanboying out over Final Yeah, Fantasy. man. Like, like the guy was super cool. You know, he's from Malaysia. It's a Malaysian uh, game studio, right? And he was real amped about it, right? And he saw the stickers and he was getting all like, oh, it's it's like super cool. So and I'm like, all right, here, you know, have some stickers and what I, you know, I, I, was, I was telling him about the podcast. And he's like, you should play this game. You should play this game. I'm like, I... I I'm I'm all about this. So I sat down for a little bit and um, it's in it's an action game, right? It's it's a it's a, you know, a 3D action game. You play as two separate characters, right? Um, you play as um, Zook and uh, Mayday, I think, right? Uh, Mayday is the guitarist and Zook is the drummer for this indie rock band, right? And the whole conceit of the game is you are fighting an EDM empire right so you're fighting this giant dance empire right so it's like rock versus edm you know in in terms of kind of the background of the game uh it's an action game and like all your all your moves and whatnot are are based on the instrument that you have right so mayday was like swinging her guitar around and whatnot you can use you can use the guitar to like power up different environmental items around the level you can you can use your weapon to swing uh projectiles back to the enemy right and uh, you know you do a little tutorial mission. That's what they had there, and and then you then you fight the level one boss, right? Who is a giant, a giant, a, a giant. Period. And he's a he's also a DJ, right? So the giant's got his whole booth, and he's got headphones on, and you know you're playing on a spinning record, right? And I was like, I was like, after after I was done with the game, right? I was talking to Juan, and I'm like, like. I'm, I'm getting some serious Jet Set Radio vibes, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, totally. Like, that was kind of one of our influences and whatnot. And you know me. You know me. Like, Jet Set. Jet Set's my jam, right? So, yeah, I know, you, I know you love Jet Set. It's one of your favorite games <laughs> right? of all time. I, it is. It is. So, you know, I was I was definitely kind of geeking out for a moment where you were where you were doing the Panzer Paladin thing. Uh, but uh, very excited for this game. It is coming out later this year, I believe. On PS4 and Steam, right? PS4 console exclusive. So, I am uh, I'm I'm super hype. So, and I think I don't know if it was right after that, but you know, soon after that, I got to tell you, <laughs> I this I I when I found this game, I thought this game. I got to say, maybe maybe my game of show, possible maybe, possible top game three. of the show, top three. Yeah. It was top really three. tight. It was really tight. It was really tight. Type three is mm-hmm. called Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mind. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. and I think one of the guys, uh, Gamestar eighty one, was involved in in, in the, this project, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One it's, from YouTube. It is. It is uh, Collector Vision Games. Uh, Collector Vision is his uh, company, I guess. Right. Uh, Gamestar eighty one is his YouTube persona and his YouTube channel. Right. So it was cool to meet him. Uh, he was. He was. He was uh, super nice. I was getting a lot of like Pitfall Indiana Jones vibes out of this. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I, 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 when I first saw this, I thought this was like a better version of Spelunky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you said that, like, this is what you thought Spelunky should have been or, or was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I listen, I like, I like Spelunky. It's a cool mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Right. But it, like, I, I really dig this game. This is another sort of uh, Metroid style type game. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually tried to 100%. The first, the whole first level that they, well, the, the level that we got to play, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because I kept, I kept dying, but it wasn't like unfair death, right? It yeah. was like, I made a mistake. I yeah. got to go back and figure out how, mm-hmm. how I'm going to get back from this. Like, um, like Shovel Knight, right? Mm-hmm. Like Shovel Knight, when you die, it's like, you made that mistake. You have to figure out how to get past this. So 
I, I thought it was it was tough but fair, right? Hundred mm-hmm. percent, yeah. I wanted to play more of the game. I, I was like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, my only criticism, I would say, mm-hmm. and again, this is also uh, mm-hmm. a pretty. I don't, you know, what? maybe it's not an early build, but. Mm-hmm. You know, we only, it's its definitely not finished yet. I know they, they're, they're looking to release it sooner, though. Uh, in, the, in the sort of the demo that we played, I didn't get any hearts anywhere. At least I didn't see any. I, I don't know how I replenished my hearts. Oh, you missed right? out, man. No, there was like pineapples and fruit lying around. Like, is that, yeah. is that what the, is the pineapples? Is that what they, is that pineapples, the pineapples is one of them for? for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For okay. Sure. Yeah, All yeah. Right. I didn't, maybe I didn't notice. I was so focused. On like killing every enemy that I saw and trying yeah. and, and the yeah, platforming, yeah. trying to figure out how to get the key because you got to get the key to get you know past the skull and bones. That yeah, are alive. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a lot like um you know they they even they even kind of even kind of said this too. They 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 drew a little inspiration from Montezuma's Revenge, right? Which is a game that I remember playing on the Commodore sixty four, uh, very much like Pitfall, Indiana Jones, and whatnot. But it was that like. Well, you could kind of go anywhere in this giant pyramid, right? And you had to get to the bottom of the pyramid to find the treasure and whatnot. And, you know, they had the they had like the keys to get through the doors. You could pick up swords to fight enemies and whatnot. It was it was like really cool, but like immediately I was like, "Oh, yeah, this is kind of like it's bringing me back a little bit." So, yeah, this so, I mean, is it's, it's it's a it's an action adventure puzzle. It's an action adventure game with like some puzzle elements. It's definitely mm-hmm. NES style graphics. It Somebody, I guess he said that somebody criticized the game as far as the chip tune sound. It didn't really have memorable, uh, uh, sort of good, good sound. And I thought it was oh, really? great. No, I just I agree. Yeah, I was about it. Yeah, and I was about it. I, I, I think I stayed there for like fifteen minutes trying, trying <laughs> to see, see if I can actually beat that level. Mm-hmm. Right. And when we were talking with when we were talking with the, with the developer, I was just like, that music is still in my head. Mm-hmm. I could still hear that music. I was like, oh, yeah, I really, yeah, dig, yeah. I really dig the music. Well, they had, they had, they had the. Um, the audio guy who put all that together, I guess yeah. the uh, composer and whatnot. So, you know, we got a little, we got a little time with him too. And he was like, Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. So, and this is yeah. like a, another one man gang, right? Like this is one uh, pretty man. much. It, it's very, 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 very small crew. Right. I think it's possibly just the one developer and then the, uh, the audio guy. And then yeah. also, also John or gamester 81 is a part of it too. So yeah. Yeah. Super cool. <laughs> Well, they want to come out this year, later this mm-hmm. year, but they want to come out on all platforms. Yep. Uh, maybe not your Samsung refrigerator, but definitely a PC Switch, <laughs> Xbox One, and PS4. So I, I, I was, I was big on Signy Hunter too. Like, uh, definitely, de- definitely high on the list. Uh, definitely in the running for top three. Uh, you know, game of the show and 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 whatnot. Another one that uh, I really liked too, and this was in the Nintendo Direct. I, uh, I think it was the one before. Yeah, it was two it was the Nintendo first one. Directs ago. It, it was, was like it the was first two. one in 2019, right? It was the one in January. I think it was the first one in 2019. Yeah, so Double Kick Heroes, right? Uh, this is coming out for uh, Steam, uh, PC, and Mac on a, on a Steam, and console exclusive on the Switch, which is awesome. Uh, it's definitely made for that. It is a uh, it is a rhythm action game where you play as a metal band who is, uh, I guess, uh, trying to survive the zombie apocalypse, right? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool, right? You're in like the back of your, uh, you're in the, you're in the back of your old school car, right? You know, they got the top down and the band's all hanging out the back, right? And you have to uh, beat in time. You have to, you know, button press in time with the rhythm of the song, right? And you know, you're basically you're basically drumming along, right? Because it's you know double kick, double kick pedal, right? That's that's like kind of the whole thing. So. They have all these different levels with like a rock and metal soundtrack, right? Um, you know, sixteen bit style graphics. While maneuvering your car too, remember? Because I, um, I, 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 I wasn't get able to, to do that. <laughs> well, especially when you when you get to the like the boss battle and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, the boss is going up and down the road, right? You gotta yep. be able to dodge those hits and you, you have to do all the double kick and maneuver the car. Right. You gotta down, keep it out. To dodge. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because they have these patterns and whatnot. I didn't really know how to do that. I was definitely missing something. Uh, but I still enjoyed it a lot. Like, I thought it was really good for what it was. So, you know, no marks against the game. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I personally need to uh, hashtag get good. So, Just get yeah. good. 
Or, yeah, exactly. or we could just put it. We could put an easy mode in there for you. We could put an easy mode. No, 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 no. The the easy mode is the tutorial. I think I, I think I skipped the tutorial. So I think I went to stage one two instead of instead of doing one one. So so that's on me. That's on me. But um, yeah. And I think uh, like around where that game was, uh, there was another one in the in kind of the indie area. Uh, a dual hand disaster. Uh, oh track, my god! Track her is the name of the game. T R A. T R A C K H E R. So many, so many, so many puns in this game, right? A dual so they, hand, D U E L. Right. <laughs> this this game, when we saw it from afar, I had I was so confused at what this mm-hmm. was, mm-hmm. right? And then you know you really wanted to play it. I, I was like, I don't I don't know what this is. This I I, I am confused. Uh, well, so that's we the thing. All- yeah, that's 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 the that's the that's the best thing. Like you got to get into that, right? You're like, oh, it's this. I know exactly what this game is. Ah, let me give it a shot. No, you got to give the got to give the weird games a shot. You gotta I, get I thought it was like I thought it, I thought it was like because you had two screens mm-hmm. and you controlling uh, you controlling both characters on both screen, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought. One screen was a shoot 'em up, and the other screen was sort of like an RPG. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I was not, like, what is not an R- not an RPG specifically. Uh, it's 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 more of like uh, it's it's a little like centipede, but like one screen is avoidance, right, and one screen is a top down shooter. So, uh, well, I thought what I thought when you got. I thought every time you went to sort of like that glowing area, which is like mm-hmm. the safe zone, then you mm-hmm. control the other area, which was like a top down shoot 'em up. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You can do them both. You at the control same them time. at the same time. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So like the left stick controls the left game, and the right stick controls the right game. You kill enemies in the left game to populate the right hand side with resources, and then on the right hand side, you pick up those resources to fuel your ship. Right, so it's insane. It it's it's it was just it was just wild, and it it took it took a little bit to really to really start to really start to get like okay, like I can do this over here, and while this is going on, I line up and shoot this guy. I can move the ship on the right hand side. It, it was com- a completely different game experience. Um, it's definitely going to take a lot of practice, I think, to get to get a, a decent at it. But my God, did it look good! Well, you're and, gonna have to. You, it's it, it, it's like you're tapping your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah, but but on steroids. It's like that on steroids. Oh my god! Um, it 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 is in Steam early access right now, right? Uh, and it, it's also coming out for PS4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. So. Um, yeah, look forward to that game. I want to say this is from Ask an Enemy Studios, and I believe they were looking to get this out later this year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. he said he wanted to come out in 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, definitely, definitely put that on your on your guys' radar. Uh, check them out online because uh, you really have to – you really have to see a video to see like what's going on to get like you know like oh now it kind of makes sense and then when you play it it's it's even <clears throat> crazier to be totally confused just like yeah. I was you have to right? see this you have to go online and, and take a look because it is one of the most interesting games at PAX. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I will then, um, say I will say that it, it it did it did catch my eyes I had no idea what was going on. Right. 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 So um, then, like, a, a game that, like, me and you played, right? Uh, it's another Metroidvania-style game <laughs> called uh, A Robot Named Fight, right? Uh, yeah. And I this think is it's a, out right now, too. It is, is out a- on it is out on uh, a PC, Mac, and Linux, I believe. You can, you, can, you, can get, uh, you can get it. It has been out for a little bit, I think, right? I think, I think you said it's on the Switch, too. It, it may already be out on the Switch. Yeah, I, I, I think it uh, I think it may have dropped already. Uh, possibly digitally. Is that right? Yeah, definitely digitally. Okay. Not not a physical release. I would have saw I would have saw this a mile away. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was a physical release. So that uh, uh, this 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 comes from Matt Bittner Games, right? It's a, another one man studio, right? Uh, yeah. Passion project, I guess. A game of love. Uh, and we played together, right? So there's two different modes. There's the four-player kind of free-for-all battle arena that you can play in the different levels. And then there's the single-player game, which is a a roguelike game, right? So the world always changes. The power-ups change based on how the world is constructed. So there's always different power-ups to get. And you were playing as the main character. I was playing as the like the floating orb, right? I was definitely play, playing a Samus. Uh-huh. I, that's, that's, this was, again, this was like Axiom Verge... 
Metroid style game. Mm-hmm. I I'm I play as a Samus in sort of the 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 sort of the mech suit, right, with the cannon mm-hmm. hand, mm-hmm. and and you played as second player of a, a floating, sort of like a floating second player that can shoot, but you yeah, you can't take yeah. damage, right? You couldn't take. Could you take I don't, damage? I don't think so. I think I was just there to help, uh, you know, shoot down enemies for you and whatnot. Um, you definitely could take damage as like the main robot protagonist. Uh, name name fight in this case. Because <laughs> uh, I got yeah. a lot of fight in me. Uh huh. A lot of fight in uh-huh. me. Uh huh. It look it look really as cool. I as I fight the Pax Plague. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously. So it was it was a it was a really good game. I I thought everything was super tight. The fact that it's a roguelike, so it plays different every time. You know, there's a ton of power ups. There's only a couple that um, get populated during your run, right? It's the the yeah. power ups that you need to get through that particular configuration. So, um, but the bosses were like all the enemies and the boss are all mm-hmm. like crazy meat, slimy, disgusting monsters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very organic. Yeah. Yeah. Very organic. And and so, like it's like behind is like this ruined city. That mm-hmm. seems to be another theme, right? Uh, it's just like, what, 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 what's the story here? So I didn't mm-hmm. get, we, we didn't really get a chance to get too deep into it as far as like reading, you know, getting to know the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I think it's out on Switch. I, I actually may pick this up on a Switch, take a look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, if I did have a criticism, some of the platform mechanics could be tightened a little bit. It was a mm-hmm. little loose, mm-hmm. a little loose. That's fair. My taste. You know, you know. Uh, or maybe give me some more hands on time with it. I don't know. Uh, I, my only issue, uh, my other issue was I really needed the second play. I really needed you mm-hmm. because I know we, we're, made a good, we're, we make a good team, Dan. We Come made on. a good team, but make a when, good it, team. When, it, when it came down to shooting in an angle, I had an issue, I had a problem like shooting in an angle. Like if it was, you know, not straight ahead above or below where it was diagonal, I can shoot diagonal, but I couldn't mm-hmm. really, I really couldn't aim diagonally and that's yeah. why i kept falling because i'm trying to shoot him because i know i could shoot diagonally it wasn't really working the way i thought it worked so uh, that's why i needed you to go down since you really couldn't take damage and get those mm-hmm. enemies that were that mm-hmm. were hard to reach right right and it was uh it, it, it was interesting because immediately after uh we played a robot name fight we were talking to matt the developer and you know he was kind of telling us about the the you know the game and the development cycles and all that and you know how it's out now and you know we were kind of like super hype and he goes the he goes to say like oh I don't know I don't know if you played this game over here this uh, dicey dungeons right and um, I was like oh no you know but I mean like I saw it you know we passed by it and whatnot and it's like yeah that's uh that's uh Terry Kavanaugh over there I'm like is it Terry Kavanaugh and I was freaking out right you didn't I don't think you necessarily knew who he was but he I have made... no idea who Terry <laughs> Kavanaugh was he's made uh he, he's made a he's made a bunch of PC games. Uh, one of the ones you may know is uh, VVVVVV, six Vs, right? VVVVVV. It's a uh, it's a super old school like throwback game. Uh, it's only got one button and the D pad, and that button like changes the gravity, right? Okay. It, the game is a game is a trip. I'm pretty sure it's on the Switch now too. Uh, yes, it, it is on the Switch. It is an amazing game. Uh, I love that game oh so much. Soundtrack. Has got an amazing chiptune soundtrack and whatnot. So I was like a huge fan of that. I'm like, I immediately made a beeline for this game, right? And I was like talking to Terry and I was like, hey, and it's like, you're Terry Kavanaugh, right? And it's like, I love your work. You are awesome. And he was like, oh my God, that's great. That's great. And he's like, do you want to play my game? I'm like, yes, I want to play your new game. And uh, this is another roguelike game, right? But it's a. Um, it's a class-based rogue game, right? So you choose one of six characters, right? You can be the warrior, the thief, the sorcerer, and whatnot, right? And that gives you different move sets, and based on your character is like how difficult the game is, right? So the warrior is like the easy character, and the jester is like the the high-level five-star difficulty, right? And um, how it is like so the game is procedurally generated, and you got to make it to the bottom floor, right? There's there's six floors. And along the way, uh, you have to fight monsters, right? And you use your dice, right? So you get, like, different cards, right? And a card may be, like, um, you know, you you put a dice in that card slot, right? So you roll a six, and you can put any, any die in there, and you put six, and it'll do, like, six damage, right? 
you know, you do like direct damage. And that's like, that's like a basic card, right? But then there's some cards that are like, if you roll an even number, right? You roll an even number, you put that in there and, you know, you can get like plus one to your next dice roll or you can get an extra die or you can get health or you can do all these like crazy things with it, right? It was really cool. And like the art style is, the art style is bananas. Like it's real, like kind of, it felt like one of those children's storybooks, you know? It felt like, uh, you know, it felt like a Marie Sendak book or like a little go bug or something, right? Really kind of like pastel, like bright and colorful visuals. Um, yeah. I was I was 100 percent about this game. This is the only game that I immediately ran home and bought that night. I was like, I got to get this game. You wouldn't stop talking about it the whole day. <laughs> no, no. This, I, game, I, this game is stuck in, this is stuck in your head. You really like this game. Right, right. So, well, right to me, well, I mean, to me, I'm like not a, not into card games or dice roguelike games. Sure, and you, sure. You, you, you played the demo to no end. And, well, yeah, and yeah. You really, like, you know, you really like, like the game. Because like I played through it once and he's like, do you want to go again? I'm like. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I'll set you up with another character. Right. Because like the warriors, like the easy, like dip your toe in, like, you know, simple, simple mechanics or whatever. It, it, it was it was still pretty in depth playing as the warrior. Right. And he gave me another character to go through. And I'm like, this is fantastic. Uh, it's still very early. Like it, it started out as an HTML5 browser game. Right. And now it's kind of like turned into a like a full fledged. Uh, I believe it's coming out on Steam, but uh, you can you can get it uh, if you go to diceydungeons.com. You can you can you can get like an early access thing like right now. You can download and play. Super stable, you know. I was actually impressed. Like there's very, I didn't I didn't have any issues with the game. Like it runs like super smooth. Um, yeah, yeah. Can't can't say enough about this game for sure, <laughs> for sure. Well, that game. <laughs> we were all about mm-hmm. and there was there was there was another game that you know that you told me i needed to play i didn't get a chance to play it mm-hmm. uh also i think this was in the nintendo direct if i'm not mistaken it was Last it was nintendo yeah and that it's is a uh it's a switch my ex- friend pedro yeah it's it's another switch exclusive right that seemed to be a big theme of the show right i think we saw a lot of games that were yeah it's coming to switch exclusively like uh console right uh, which is which is kind of really great to hear because I hear Nintendo is notorious with um, developers trying to get their games on their system. Right? There's a lot more hoops to jump through. I think. Well, hey, now everybody wants to be on there because they went they went uh, Miyamoto to get hooked on their game so they can get a Zelda or a Mario <laughs> character in their game. Of course, <laughs> like Cadence of Hyrule. So. Right, 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 right. So. I have to say, my friend Pedro is the best game starring a sentient banana. <laughs> I will. I will also say it is the only game starring a sentient banana. Right? That is the conceit. You were basically controlled, I believe, by a sentient banana uh, who kind of guides you through this game world. Uh, Pedro, I believe, is the banana. Right? Uh, you play as an assassin. It felt a little like. Um, the humor felt a little a little bit like Deadpool, right? If that okay. makes sense. Um, even even kind of the character a little bit uh, kind of had a little bit of a Deadpool vibe. He's got a yellow jumpsuit as opposed to a red jumpsuit, but um, you know, that's neither uh, here nor there. And it's a side-scrolling action game, so you basically do like Matrix-style maneuvers uh, going around this game world, right? And you're playing in this kind of like gritty city. And you end up like jumping from like balconies and like crashing through doors and, you know, doing flips and spins. And uh, you've got like a matrix style, like bullet time where everything slows down and uh, you can shoot in like two different directions. Right. If you get if you get the second pistol, like you can fire in 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 you can fire to the left and then fire to the right. And you can use both sticks to do that. Um, Really cool. Like uh, I think it had. I feel like it had some issues with the animations, right? Okay. Because uh, it was a little weird, like it, like like when you when you kind of when you kind of went into bullet time and you were real like low to the ground, you would kind of just like you know like flop against the floor a little bit. It didn't didn't necessarily look as smooth, you know. Um, it it felt like it could use a little bit of polish, right? Well, that's what happens when you're controlled by a sentient <laughs> banana. <laughs> I know, right? I guess the, the, I, it should have been an apple. Yeah, well, there you go. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. God damn it, Dan. 
Um, yeah, so this is this is like 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 we said, it's a Switch exclusive, right? Uh, it is also coming out on PC, I believe. Steam. Uh, the developer is Dead Toast. The publisher is Devolver. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of super hyped for this. Uh, this this also should be out later this year. Pretty solid. Uh, I, I will say, this the next game mm-hmm. again. You, you you played this game first. You got a chance to play it, and then you you ran to me and said, "You got to play this game." And, and I, I was like, I "Yeah, maybe." Ran. Nah, I, you, you, tell me, tell me, tell me now. Are you happy that I dragged you to play this game? I am. Mm-hmm. It was it 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 was great, and mm-hmm. it was also another game that was in a Nintendo Direct. That's right. That's right. And also a Switch exclusive. Uh, funny is it, wait, wait, is it? Is it? Exclusive? Yeah, it is. It is 100. percent Yeah, yeah. It's oh, not wow, coming out for PS4. It's not coming out for Xbox. It well, is you know, out for it Steam, though. It is coming out for Steam, and it, and, it, and it will be a limited run game at some point, January of 2020. Oh yeah, no, I it 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 has to. I mean this this game is dropping digitally in like a week and a half, right? I think April 18th or 19th is the launch date for this game, uh, and that is Katana Zero. Right, we're both high on this game. You oh, more so than 100%. me at first, oh, and then I got a chance to get hands on. I had to get you and, into it because you were a little like, uh, I don't know about the one hit kills and the whatever else. I don't want the high level of stress. I'm like, Dan, I understand. You still, you have to play this game. So you kept you bugged me. You bugged you. I think you saw it like on a, on Thursday, and you bugged me for two days to play this game. And I yeah, finally, man. I finally gave in yeah. on Saturday. And got a chance to play the game. Yeah. And, so so you you end up you end up playing as the dragon, um, as some of the uh, some of the some of the dialogue uh, kind of unfolded. You know when you played and you realize, okay, well, I'm the dragon. All right, I'm an assassin. I'm a ninja samurai. I guess I guess a samurai assassin, right? Because you you have a samurai sword. You're not necessarily ninja, but yeah, you know you do get to like jump off the walls and do acrobatics and whatnot. Um, you do assassination missions, right? So you're tasked with a mission. You go, all right, here's what you got to do. You got to go in this level, find this guy, kill this guy, or, you know, find this guy and then try and escort him out of the level, right? And every 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 level is uh, 2D, side-scrolling, right? Nice uh, pixel graphics and all that. And, you know, you can swing your ninja sword uh, to, to kind of lop enemies' uh, heads off and whatnot. Everything's a one-hit kill, so they can kill you in one hit. You can kill them in one hit. Uh, you can reflect bullets Not- back. Every enemy is one hit. Some some enemies are two hits. The guys with the swords are two hits. Oh, maybe that's right. Yeah, yeah. I hit I them think... once. I hit them once, and 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 it, you saw like their their energy level like cut in half, and then he gets up. And as he gets up, you got to make sure you time it right. So when he gets up, so he doesn't pull his sword, you kill him. You you hit him again to kill him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's definitely true. Um. So yeah. So there are some enemies that take a few hits. Um. And. You kind of have to like survey the scene before you jump in, right? Because you're typically like outnumbered. It's not usually just one on one, right? It's it's two on one, and then by the time you engage with one enemy, two more the are coming out of the come. door. Yeah, or someone's yeah. coming up in an elevator, or someone's coming down from the top, or coming in from the balcony, and you're like, oh shit, right? So luckily, you get like um, you get a Matrix style slowdown, right? They call it like a uh, Chronos, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, your character is imbued with this power, um, this 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 uh, time shift ability. Right. So you can kind of slow things down and be like, all right, I got a second to breathe. I'm going to kill this guy. Then I'm going to jump off the wall and then I'm going to pick up this beer bottle and then chuck this uh, uh, across the level to hit this guy. And then I'm going to slide under this table like you could do all that. Right. It was uh, it was it was super cool. Right. And it felt a little tough. Right. I think I think that's kind of fair to say. Right. Um, it was, it was tough, but it was, it was like, oh, come on. I, I got this. Come you can on. do it, right? Yeah. I yeah, can do yeah. this. And then you can throw, you can throw things to break, uh, sort of as a distraction. So enemies can go in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. And I kept just throwing the stuff at the enemy. I was like, screw <laughs> this. Cause you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I just go in guns blazing, man. I, I know. Not, See, you can't, stealth. you can't do that here. You can't do that here. You gotta, you gotta I, wait I, for the guy to be by the door and then bash through the door. So you knock him down. And then if you die. You go back to the beginning, uh, sort of of that area, right? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's like there's like checkpoints throughout, I guess the overall mission, right? So you know you you end up going back to that bit until you until you get it right, and then you can kind of move on to the next uh, section, which you know was kind of neat. It's 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 not 
it's not do the whole entire thing over again. It's like you got to do this section till you get it right. So, but the but the coolest part of the game, which you don't get in the direct, right? Or at least you don't. It doesn't stand out in the direct. You have mm-hmm. dialogue options because you have to see a therapist. <laughs> Well, you're yeah, having, you're yeah. having dream. You're having like weird nightmares and dreams. Yeah, spoilers, and, spoilers. There's there's a reason why you can stop time or slow down time, I should say, um, and that manifests into these weird nightmares, right? So, yeah, like uh, you know, in between the missions, you got to see a psychiatrist and then kind of talk out, you know, the nightmares and whatnot. And and based on those dialogue options, I think they said it it unlocks different parts of the story, like the the backstory. Yeah. Well, you can you can you can beat the game and sort of not have all the whole, not have the whole story because mm-hmm. if you don't talk to the therapist, then you then it's you won't get the whole story, right? Right. You yeah, you could be like the, you could be the like meaning of the dreams are. You could be like real curt and just be like, nah, just nah, just like give me the drugs, I'm good, right? Yeah, or you can open up you know, and tell them kind of what the dream was, and then sh- mm-hmm. and then the therapist can explain it to you, and you can open up more, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, I yeah. love those dialogue options. Yeah, that, I was. Pretty- I was a uh, I I was a little curt in the second mission to the uh, receptionist at the hotel, and uh, <laughs> she got kind of angry because <laughs> oh, I was like was mashing cool. on the X button or the A button, and I and I was like, oh god, oops, oops, you know. And she was asking me questions about my outfit, and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's a bathrobe or whatever. It's like, oh, you know, that's so cool. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Um, so yeah, right. and then like in between in between the levels, you see your psychiatrist, and there's also time at home, right? So we got to make tea and like watch some TV, and you know, from what I understand, like the, um, you know, you were you were you were watching the news and they were explaining like the thing that just went down, which was the kind of all the murder and carnage that like you just uh, you just uh, did to all those guys uh, previously. So you know, it's kind of uh, kind of interesting. It's it's kind of interesting. But there was a game I dragged you to. I told mm-hmm. you you had to play this game, and you ignored mm-hmm. me. You ignored me. I didn't ignore you. you. It was just you like, yeah. to see, you know. We'll, we'll, You're we'll, like, yeah, we'll, we'll okay. Get to we'll, it. we'll get to it. Yeah, okay, we'll play it. Yeah, sure. And I said, no, 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 you got to play it. And I played it. I played it with somebody else. Like, uh, mm-hmm. when I first played it, I played it co-op with somebody else. And that is Blazing Chrome. That is the best way to describe it. It's, it's, it's. Oh, it's Contra. a new Contra game. It's Contra. It's hundred percent. hundred percent Contra, right? It's Contra in the best way possible, right? Contra. It's a Contra style shooting game, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was great. It, it is, it is Contra through and uh, through and through because yeah. you get this, you get like the different power ups where you get the different weapons, and I, and mm-hmm. I kept getting a stupid laser. And I'm like, I don't want the laser. You need the spread shot, right? Spread shot. Spread shot. The win. Um, you know, the good news is that you can hold up to two weapons, so you can kind of swap between them. Uh, it does have the newer mechanic of the newer Contra games, where you can hold one of the um, you can hold one of the shoulder buttons to uh, shoot in place, right? So you can kind of aim the gun around you while you're standing in place, which was uh, kind of neat. Um, there were definitely some driving missions, right? Where there was like a motorcycle uh, level. I don't know if you got the play oh, that yeah. one. Uh, no, no. I, I, uh, there's one where you're like in um, like a rail car going down, going and platforming and stuff like oh, that. Oh, nice, and, uh, nice. No, uh, I I played I just played a two uh, two player co op with uh, some random guy mm-hmm. and we were kicking we were kicking ass right. Uh, I thought it was awesome. I was like, yeah, this is, I, this, is... I, this game this game looked awesome. Yeah, this is another one being published by the uh, the arcade crew, right? We talked a little earlier in the show. Uh, they're doing Windjammers, uh, they're doing Kunai, and they're doing uh, Streets of Rage Four among other games, right? So. They are turning into a powerhouse indie publisher. Well, the developer was Joy Masher, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Joy Masher, right? Yep. But uh, but sort of arcade. I think they're. I think the. I think the other arcade is publishing the game, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, uh, definitely go look out for uh, Blazing Chrome. Mm-hmm. Now, a game that I've walked past a few times, <laughs> and then it was a game I walked past a few times. And yeah, I got to be honest, I walked past it, didn't pay any attention to it until this, <laughs> until, until this old man just like sort of tackled me and was like, hey, do you want to play this game? I was like, sure, why not? Right. And it's it's another Metroid style game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sort of uh, it's called A New, A Distant Light uh, coming out. It's a Steam. Was it 
Steam wish list, right? They want to put it out on a PC, Mac, Linux. Uh, the stretch goal uh, was to put it on the Switch, which they right, right. they met their stretch goal mm-hmm. on uh, on Kickstarter. So it's definitely yeah. going to come to the Switch. And, and the I, uh, I PS4 got, and Xbox One too. I gotta, yeah, I gotta believe it's coming to all major platforms. And I, had, I, I, I ran to you and and, and I said, listen, you got to play this game. Yeah, yeah. You gotta play this Metroid style game. Yeah, it was really uh, good. It was actually really good. Um, you know, uh, it was it was uh, you know sci fi kind of motif as as a lot of the uh, uh, Metroid style games are right. Definitely um, a sci fi. You you play like as a. It, it seemed like you play like as a robot, like a, mm-hmm. like a small robot who uh, who's trying to find who's trying to find a a light in the distance. Right, mm-hmm. trying to get to the light and distance. I didn't know much about the story. Right, uh, didn't really get a chance to to dive deep into the story. But mm-hmm. I will say, the game is really polished. The mechanics are really good, and the the devs are former EA devs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they they kind of they broke free. <laughs> they broke free of the the EA prison that uh you know some might say, and you know started up their own studio, which is uh, you know great. Their uh, Resonator is the name of their new studio. So. You know, definitely, uh, definitely take a look for that game. You can you can find it online at uh, a new the game uh, a n e w the game dot com, and uh, they uh, have all sorts of cool stuff on there. Well, the good thing I like about this game is it breaks it up. It breaks up sort of you know that Metroid style uh, roguelike platforming and stuff like that because it, it puts you in a huge mech where where you you're in this big you're in this big mech and you're going through trying to uh, beat this level or you're in a tank you you're sort of like in a you're in a tank trying to traverse a level uh, and they had they said that this is going to be spread out through the game just so it breaks up some of the gameplay uh so I think I thought that was pretty cool when I first got into the the, the big mech I felt invincible until I ran out of power <laughs> <laughs> all right and then it's like oh boy <laughs> so yeah uh, I really like that game. That was a pretty yeah. cool game. Yeah, I um, there, there there was a game that I played, and Dan, I know, I know this is going to speak to you, and I'm sad you didn't get to play it, but uh, it is a love letter to uh, first person shooters of yore, right? And uh, there was there was two of them. One I think was um, want to say like Ion Meat, I think maybe or Ion Storm or Ion uh, something or other, and that game was built on the the build engine, which is the same engine that Duke Nukem was built on. So they made they made an entirely new game based off that engine, and the other game that I did get to play was called Wrath: uh, Aeon of Ruin. That is based on the Quake engine, right? The Quake Quake uh, One engine. So it's kind of got those throwback visuals to the mid to late '90s, right? You know, when uh, PC gaming was king. Uh, it's a very fast-paced shooter. Um, had a really nice atmosphere to it. Uh, everything about it just felt great, right? Um, you know, super cool, like throwback, very, very kind of fast twitch, uh, gameplay, lots of, lots of weapons and power ups and whatnot. Um, you know, can't say, can't say, can't say enough about this game. I believe it's PC exclusive. I believe you can get it on steam early access right now. Um, so I would implore you, uh, to check that out. Um, I know it's been kind of kicking around for a little bit, but, uh, it's, it felt really good. It's, it's, you know, it's definitely in a really good state, so. And the last game I want to talk about mm-hmm. is I, I, it, it's probably <laughs> it's probably one of the funniest things I saw at PAX. Uh huh. Yeah, and yeah, is, yeah. And this, is, and this is and this is a video game. It is. It is. It is. I, not, it, 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 this, is it, act, it, this is actually a video game, right? It's it's called Freedom Finger, and you play and, as a middle finger, and right. You're. It's this is a middle finger shoot uh, shmup. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, it's a shoot 'em up side. It's a side scrolling shoot 'em up. You play as a middle finger, right? You you actually you you play as a whole hand with your middle finger outstretched, and that's your, your finger, that's your gun. That's your gun. Yeah, there mm-hmm. you go. Uh, but it, I will it, say, it really, really, levels, really, really ridiculous. In certain levels, uh, you can reach out and grab something and throw it, and then mm-hmm. your middle finger goes back because that's oh, your, that's, that's, that's pretty your interesting. Weapon. How did you? How did you like the controls and all that? Was it? I you know, the feel control. Good? Well, if I couldn't stop laughing, I couldn't mm-hmm. stop smiling. Okay, because mm-hmm. I thought this was like so so creative. Why didn't anybody think of this before? Yeah, right. Um, this this probably would have uh, you know started up the ESRB if it came out a little bit sooner. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Came out in the early nineties or whatnot. Be like, right. Yeah. This, 
This could have been like a Beavis and Butthead game, right? Right? Like I think it could have been sure, a Beavis sure. and Butthead skin what, when we were kids. Certainly what crude enough based on the uh based on the art style and the, the enemies that you fight and whatnot. So But every everything seems to be tight. I I I liked all the mechanics. Uh, yeah? just, just shoot oh, them up nice. was pretty cool. Nice. Uh, I just like when you're like sh- uh, you got this boss battle and, and, and you have the middle finger is trying to shoot at the the boss battle. The boss has like a huge nose. So mm-hmm. it's like a middle finger uh, mm-hmm. facing off against a nose. Yeah, I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you happen to notice, but uh, it has Nolan North, right? It has Nathan Drake, uh, the voice of Nathan Drake in the game, as well really? as I uh, didn't yeah, that. yeah, as well as well as uh, John DiMaggio, right? Uh, he's 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 been on a Futurama Adventure Time and the like, and uh, a couple other dudes who were who were pretty recognizable uh, from their uh, voice at least. So that's kind of cool. I did cool, not know that. You know? I did not. Know, I, I did not notice. Mm-hmm. That. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, right. Uh, I had a, I don't know what platforms this is coming out on. I mean, right. I know it's on it's on Steam. Right, right. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, well, it's I not, mean, it's not like... out yet. It's not mm-hmm. out yet, but it's coming mm-hmm. out on Steam. Yeah, uh, it seems like it would I, come to uh, console too. You know, I would want I would want this on the Switch. Do you think Nintendo? Come on, Nintendo! Come on, come on! We're, we're <laughs> past the we're past the ninety. Come on, right? this has to come out on on the switch. I want to I want to get shoot him up with a middle finger out on the switch. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So so, yeah, so, Dave, so... We, so Dave, we saw a lot of games. Mm-hmm. We played a lot of games, but there can only be one rated G game of packs. Oh, it's right? like Highlander. There can be only one. There can only there can, there can be only one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't let me sing the Queen song. We talked about Queen. I I'm not going to let you sing at all because because you do not have a good voice. Sorry, and I, sorry, Dave. and I have the Pax Plague, and you have the Pax Plague. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody wants to hear that. So yeah, so so you know, Born we, we thought to be kings. Here it is, masters it is. of the universe. I'm, okay, I'm gonna stop. So so we thought we thought we would we would honor. Uh, <laughs> we thought we would honor uh, one game <laughs> as as a uh, king of the show. Um, we had a game of we Pax. Had a, we had a knockdown, drag him out, beat him up, no holds barred fight. To I had my middle kinda, finger out. You shooting. did, yeah. I had, had my middle, middle finger, finger out, out. Just, just like just like the uh, freedom finger. And uh, you know, we had we had we had to much debate. Uh, we we finally decided on uh, game of the show. Uh, we wanted to do like uh, two runner ups, one each uh, games that we thought that were uh, fantastic, uh, but not quite not quite the number one spot. And uh, I'll go first if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it to um, to No Straight Roads. Uh, wow, that game, that game I'm shocked. Heavy, heavy, heavy on the Jet Set Radio vibe, right? Super stylish, look really cool. Awesome soundtrack. Uh, you know, there's not too much, not too much more to say about it. Like, go check that game out. There you go. I I fought to Finel, mm-hmm. right? To 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 put this on the list of our top, at least top three. If it didn't make it to game of the show it needed to be in the top three and it is sydney hunter in the curse of the mayan i thought this was a fantastic game mm-hmm. it was the only it was one of two games the other game is a game of the packs one mm-hmm. of two games where i blocked everybody out and i just played you were and wanted to continue playing i was in the zone and mm-hmm. the music really got to me i really you know what whoever said the 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 chip tune music in, in this game uh, wasn't catchy. I don't, I don't know, know if they played. I, yeah. I don't know if they played old school games. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't know if they played NES games. It's this, crazy. Yeah, I love the chip tune music. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that person me, was. I don't know what that person was smoking. Okay, right, well, let me not say I love it. Let me not. Let me. Not, maybe that's too strong. But it definitely stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So it definitely. Mm-hmm. I thought it was catchy. Yeah, I, love I really is love enjoyed. is the appropriate word, man. I, I I I'm I am on I am on board. We were Mui Simpatico. Uh The soundtrack definitely on point. Definitely so I d- definitely uh, brings back nostalgia uh, mm-hmm. memory of of playing NES games when we were kids. Right. So mm-hmm. I really love that game. Okay. So I can't okay, wait for Dan. that to come out. Dan, without without further ado, we need to crown the Christopher Lambert the game of the show, the Highlander, the rated G game of packs. I'll let you do the honors, Dave. And that game is Katana Zero. Game of the show. Can we get some? Can we get some applause? Can we get some applause? <sighs> I, born, born to be 
want to be kings. We are masters of the universe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that game. I, I'm, I'm so happy that game is coming out. Phone. I'm so happy that game is coming out in like a week and a half because I literally can't wait. I literally no, can't I, wait. I really loved. I, all right, I really liked that game. Mm-hmm. I was really into it once I got past the whole. You know what? I I didn't think of the whole um, Matrix style, right? Because mm-hmm. right. I thought this was going to be like a Hotline Miami because they gave me that Hotline. Miami, it Miami has that vibe. vibe. It has that vibe visually, and and even like even the the nice like a side scrolling, like, like a side like a side scrolling Hotline Miami. Mm-hmm. I thought that's what this was going to be, mm-hmm. where it's just you know fast paced. You come in, one hit, you're dead. Yeah, um, yeah. It is, the, it, the is whole, in, it is in a way. It is in a way. It is in a way, but the Matrix style brings another element to it that makes mm-hmm. it... Uh, kind of kind of, kind of slow down so you can kind of think, plan so out you your moves sort of, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Plan out your moves where I can... Okay, this guy, I know this guy's hiding in in behind that door, mm-hmm. right? That's not that's not on the side. It's on the other, you know, like on the other plane. So, okay, I'm going to slow it down because he has a gun. And once you have a... Listen, you cannot... Once you get hit with a bullet, it's over. Right, that's it. So that's it. One hit kill. You know, can't get around that. Um. So yeah, yeah. And they, the guys in the elevator drove me. Drove me <laughs> they kept popping out. Right. They kept you know, popping like, out. As, like, as how soon many as you are know, you? As soon how as many you, of these guys are in here? As soon as you know the pattern, right? Then it's like, oh, okay, okay. I can just stand to the left. I kill the one guy and move to the right. The other guy comes out. Kill that and guy. slow down. Right? Slow down. Cause exactly. He probably has a gun. Exactly. He probably has a gun. It's always the it, last guy that has the gun. And you get right. That's down. right. That's right. And it feels so satisfying when you get it and you're like, yeah, I got you. I got you. Right. And that's in the books. All right. That's, that's down. And then you even get to watch your action afterwards. Right. Cause it plays oh, it back like a VCR. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They have a replay. It back oh like a VCR. my God. Super cool. I- so. I, I would say the thing that put it over the top for me is the same they put over the top for you, and that is the whole dialogue options, right? Yeah, right. When you talk to that. the therapist, that's unique. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool and unique for mm-hmm. this game. Yeah, so super cool. Katana Zero, rated G, game, game of, of the packs. show. Mm-hmm. So that's it, folks. That's uh, that's episode. Uh, it's episode one fifty eight in the books. Our PAX twenty nineteen extravaganza episode. Uh, it's been fun. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a wild five days. Uh, happy to be back. Um, Dan, you need to, you need to get yourself some rest. You need to get over this Pax Pox. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my voice. I'm sorry mm-hmm. for the singing. Mm-hmm. I got the, I got the Pax. Oh, don't play. apologize, Dan. I, don't apologize. Feel, Queen I is feel, the best. I feel, I feel terrible. <laughs> I feel I feel like all these games just came down and hit me, hit me from the ceiling like an anvil. <laughs> right, right. So we will be back uh, with a new episode next Tuesday. Right. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, back to your uh, regularly scheduled program. Uh, we want to uh, thank. We want to thank all of the devs. We want to thank all of the fans. We want to thank everybody at PAX. We want to thank Mike and Jerry most of all for uh, putting on the Penny Arcade Expo yet again. Uh, for another successful year, uh, it's been great, and everyone was great. Uh, so happy about all of this. So big thanks there, right? Uh, if you, as the fan, want to interact with us, and we know you do, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Rated G for Gamers. Uh, remember also that we have a contest running for the month of April, right? Uh, head to our Twitter. You can win a copy of Shantae, The Pirate's Curse, right? Um, so go there and we have instructions on how to enter that contest. Uh, just follow those instructions and uh, you'll be good to go. We will be picking a winner uh, in two weeks time. So episode 160 uh, on the show, we will be uh, we will be picking a winner. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right. And also, don't forget to check out the Gaming Podcast Alliance. Right. That's GamingPodcastAlliance.com uh, where we are there as well as uh, some other great podcasts. So go there and check them out. All right. So uh, please listen. Like, rate, review, and subscribe. And as always, keep gaming. <laughs>